Hello, all of you. Am I audible to you all? I hope there was some uh, audio issue in my system. Yes, yes. You are audible. Okay. So, uh, have you all been able to have a view on the video played? Yes. Okay. We can see you. Okay. Thank you very much. How are you doing today? Good, sir. Good. Okay. So, I was briefing in that uh, this would be a green belt first day session and we will be having a four hour session with a half an hour of break and uh, we can have a split of 15 15 minutes break as per the topic convenience if we have to take a break we will just complete up a topic and then we can have a 15 minutes of stretch break and uh, then in the total duration we will have an, another 15 minutes break so half an hour we can have a rest now I would like to begin with a quick introduction uh, about myself. I am into training last 14 years and uh, have been working as a Six Sigma consultant and lean consultant with uh, various India-based organization and Gulf-based institutions. Have been working for various government sectors in Doha and uh, have been involved with a lot of banking sectors. And in India, I have been working as a lot many IT and ITES established organizations. So hope I will be able to bring in some uh, technical and uh, conceptual understanding from Lean Six Sigma, which can contribute to uh, your better understanding with the content I have tried building in for this focus group. And uh, we'd like to quickly go through five minutes for each one of your introduction. So can I start with uh, Vishnu? Good afternoon. Very good afternoon. And uh, um, currently, I'm working in Moscow as a senior pre and procurement engineer. I'm working for the service construction. Like, uh, I deal with the local and overseas uh, suppliers. Every mm -hmm. the 150, 170, a, a 20,000 budget is a procurement and we need a procurement. Okay. Uh, I have 10 years of experience and I've been in mechanical engineering, graduate in mechanical engineering. Oh. Master's in automotive automotive and vehicle construction. And okay. basically to take the six sigma uh, to grow further. And uh, as I know when I'm studying engineering, basically six sigma is reducing the level. And the practicality, uh, to be honest, as you are six sigma expert, how far Working profession, how far they are implementing also very less. So I thought, you know, if I take this education, it will add an advantage to my career and I can keep something to my company wherever I can. Vishnu, uh, Vishnu, this learning is not just a syllabus or a course. It is a life-based culture. Yeah. Six Sigma is a culture which we have to adopt and admire. Yeah. The moment we adopt, for example, uh, if you're changing our country, if you're changing our workplace, in every new organization, in every new country, we have a new understanding and a new lifestyle to adopt, a new yeah. culture to involve into the new culture. Probably we have not been living in so far, but we have to admire, respect and adopt it and make it our day-to-day -day lifestyle. So... I hope Six Sigma will also bring in like a cultural change, interpersonal skill change, and also a lot of set of skill set which Six Sigma contributes to your better means appraisals in your mindset. Because the way we think it and the way we should ideally think, that is the set of transformation Six Sigma is going to do. The best part for each one of us is that it is completely dependent on us how we want to incorporate it, how you, we want to engage it. There is no as such standard policy, guideline, rules, uh, which lot many other professional certification brings with. Six Sigma is like a open, open door policy. You have been taught about it, but how you want to adopt it and how you want to incorporate it, it completely depends on each, every individual. In ISO, you have a set principles, set guidelines. You cannot go beyond that. But in Six Sigma, you have your own horizon, how you want to play, how you want to make it, how you want to do it. But the concept should not be changed because if you change the concept, it will be no more the Six Sigma. Yes. 
can we have the second participant to have a quick introduction with? Yeah, Mr. Absaik Desai, Umakan Gubrele, speaking from uh, Muscat, Oman. Hello, Umakan. Uh, How are you for today? I am good. Hope you are also good. Yes, thank you for asking. And, uh, I have total 18 year experience in flexible packaging industry. Mm -hmm. I am MSc Mathematics and IP from Delhi. Perfect. Currently, I am heading quality department. As a, apart from quality, I have a uh, I am a QMS auditor, internal auditor. I am FSMS internal auditor. I am IUPU, BO, BO, VRC, uh, UK Intertech uh, also internal auditor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I have a rich experience in this flexible packaging, packaging field. And also I am assistant to run also. So we want, uh, we want to learn more about the how to uh, do systematic or arrangement in department, apart from department, how to do lean, uh, apply Lean Six Sigma in organization. Certainly, certainly. I, I will try to do my best. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Makan. Can I have Mr. Anand? Yeah. Good afternoon and good uh, morning, uh, everyone. Uh, this is Anand. Um, I am working for an organization called CJ, primarily into a IT delivery organization. Mm -hmm. Been in the CJ for the last 20 years. So currently, I'm leading a transformation program for a trade finance domain, mm -hmm. uh, which has supply chain. Mm -hmm. uh, why I have taken this training is uh, I, I myself is a PMP certified and an auditor as well and scrum master. Great. Uh, uh, but uh, I, I want to see how Six Sigma is going to enhance my skill in mm -hmm. terms of implementing the best practices uh, down the line in terms of, you know, uh, to change the, some of the ground realities, right? That's what I would be looking at. Okay, perfect. Six Sigma will certainly try to uh, uh, make your understanding more into the process. However, project is uh, very well has to implement within a process or for a process or in wide organization level. So process is everywhere. Yeah. So that's the place where Six Sigma makes a better role. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks, Anand, for joining us. And uh, can we have the next participant, please? Thank you. You're welcome. Yes, can we have some Hello, more sir. parts? Yeah. Yes, can I go uh, next? Yes, please. Yes, hi. Hi, everyone. Hello, uh, hello uh, Adushek. Um, my name is Viam. Viam, um, okay. uh, Yes, uh, I live in Dubai. Uh, I've been in the UAE for more than 12 years. Great. Um, most of my experience has been in uh, in the uh, financial and investment industry. Okay. Uh, I used to work uh, in an uh, investment bank, and now I'm uh, an office manager uh, working with CFA Institute. Okay, CFA. Uh, yes, the Chartered okay. Financial Analyst. Right, 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 right. Uh, so the reason why uh, I chose to go for the Six Sigma first, it has been uh, uh, referred and encouraged by uh, one of my uh, friends. Mm -hmm. uh, so not only, so for, for two reasons, actually, for the uh, professional level and uh, uh, on a personal level. For, uh, on a professional level is to, of course, uh, um, for a career growth. Uh, mm -hmm. Because you become a better leader, you have a better reasoning uh, uh, about the uh, the processes. Plus, on a personal level, it changes uh, your uh, mindset and your perception. Uh, perception very true. On things. Very true. So I was very keen and interested to, uh, and I was looking forward to this course actually. Thank you very much for joining, and I will reach, try to take care of it. Thank you much. Can we have the next participant, please? Yeah, hi, Abhishek. Uh, this is Pranay Mahaldar. Hello, Pranay. Yeah, so uh, currently I'm working with uh, KPMG India in the IT advisory practice. Okay. And uh, I've been working for around uh, two and a half years with KPMG now. So mm -hmm. <laughs> currently my experience is predominantly in uh, cyber posture assessments and tech risk, tech risk assessments. Uh, uh -huh. which includes some uh, technologies like SWIFT and other payment assessments and some vendor assessments as well. So okay. uh, I chose this uh, 
uh, course because I was, uh, you know, one of my colleagues has already uh, done this course and he has referred me. So, uh, and he has explained me some of the benefits which has really helped him in the organization, you know, to grow more. True, that's that's really true. And yeah. KPMG is very much into Six Sigma. Correct, correct, yeah. Right. Thank so, you. thank you very much, Pani, for joining. So, can you have the next participant, please? Hello. Hello. Uh, my name is Jason Al Tamimi, right. and um, I am a chemical engineer. I'm working for uh, uh, Capco, Qatar uh, Petrochemical Company, for almost uh, 15 years. And uh, as you know, this all, all the industries companies they have like a lot of projects, and I would like to um, to to join or uh, to join them, and they refer me to go for uh, six sigmas. And I selected this course to be one, one of the selected members of the, of the project. Perfect, perfect. Thank you, Jasim. And uh, I, I will try to re relate more to your domain as well. Thank you very much. So can you have the next participant, please? Hello. Hello. Hi, uh, good afternoon. Uh, I'm Benedict uh, from Hi. the Philippines. Hi. Uh, so I'm a chemical engineer, and my uh, my experience has been with um, pharmaceutical and food manufacturing as a quality personnel. So the reason why I joined uh, this class is to be more confident in myself um, when it comes to problem solving and learn more on um, statistics and you know to be able to. Well, now I I have I'm not affiliated with any company because I actually wanted to go to the operations itself as a chemical engineer. But okay. I want to what I what I will be able to learn here. I want to take it with me and um, in my next job. I truly appreciate this. Thank you very much for joining. Can you have the next participant, please? Thank you. You're welcome. Hi, Mr. Abhishek, and hi everyone. Hello. Yeah, this is Bukhari Abdurrahman. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Basically, I'm from India, but presently working in Saudi Arabia. Okay. Yeah, I have totally 17 years experience in uh, uh, sales and uh, supply chain. Mm -hmm. Okay, I mm -hmm. was working with in India, uh, ICIC, Prudential, and Birla Sunlight. Okay. And I, yeah, then I came to Saudi Arabia in 2009. Mm -hmm. uh, from from initially starting from Saudi Arabia, I started in warehousing and supply chain management. Mm -hmm. Okay, presently I am in the same field as trucking. Okay, and uh, I found out that logistics is the more important in uh, uh, currently growing the field. Okay, mm -hmm. I have I have but, uh, more than ten years experience in logistics and supply chain. Perfect. Okay, mostly Perfect. Mo mostly mostly I am uh, uh, doing in warehouse warehouse management. Right. And, uh, uh, yeah. Why I am joining in this course because I have to get uh, more ideas regarding the sigma for the inventory purpose and uh, warehouse management. Understood. However, we like to add into a, along with lean six sigma, uh, certainly supply chain uh, do contribute a lot of with the inventory management. Okay, so fine. lean, yeah, lean can play a very wise role. Six sigma can be very um, upskilled understanding. Uh, yeah. Along with this, uh, if supply chain uh, is is being added, then okay. your entire uh, storybook is ready for the oh, inventory okay. management. Okay, good. <laughs> okay, yeah. thank you, thank you, thank you. Very thank much. you very much. Thank you, Mr. Brian, for joining us. So, can I have the next participant, please? Yes. Hello, everyone. Hello. Uh, my name is My name is Ramada. Uh, I'm half Egyptian, half Jordanian. Currently living in Egypt. And uh, I'm working as the head of uh, recruitment department in Nigeria Global. Okay. I'm responsible for all uh, German, Dutch, and Russian accounts across Egypt. Okay, perfect, perfect. But really, uh, so we have someone from the HR. And I'm studying now six. Thank you. Okay, okay, okay. I think I'm having a little voice uh, audio disturbance. Uh, hello, am I audible to you all? Yes, yes. Yes. 
Okay. Yes, so I, what Ravda said at the, at the end. Yeah, I, I skipped that. I really missed that. Probably there was an audio breakdown, so I, I couldn't make out. Yes, I'm sorry. I'm, I was just saying that I'm studying Six Sigma parallel to my MBA also. Okay. As I did. Okay. Yes, I'm a major account and uh, major HR and marketing oh. in my MBA now. Okay, so HR, marketing, yes, and in MBA, you have a course of Six Sigma. So many, many MBA institutions yes. are making it mandatory. Uh, yes, I think yeah, so. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's coming in, in, a, in a lot and uh, probably in a year's time, every institution will certainly come up with uh, um, Six Sigma as a mandatory process training. Right. Mm -hmm. Thank yes. you. Thank you very much Thanks. for joining us. So can I request for the second participant? Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. So can I request for the another participant? Yeah, hello everyone. Shubham Sophia this side. Shubham, yeah, please. Yeah, hi, greetings from India. I'm currently working with KPMG in the risk consulting domain and I'm predominantly working on the software asset management. Okay. So basically, we here and work on the uh, publishing baseline reports and dashboards, highlighting gaps and you know, giving some remedial actions to the clients for their software licenses that they have procured. Mm -hmm. um, accordingly, it help them assess their current SAM maturity level and provide recommendations to their next phase. And parallelly, there are some tools as well, which we work on, named as Flexera and ILMT. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, right, right. Yeah, and I, I hope for a good time. <laughs> yes, we too. <laughs> Thank you for yeah, joining us, yeah. Subhan. Sure, so, happy to happy to connect with everyone. Yes. So, may I request uh, the other person, please? Or are we done with all of you? Hi. Hello. Hello. Hi. Hi. Good afternoon. So I'm Albert. So I'm currently working at Fossil Philippines. Uh, a cement manufacturing company and uh, currently I'm, I'm working on there as one of the project officers but my current role in the company is a route to market officer. Uh, previously actually I already attended uh, Lean Six Sigma Green Belt uh, okay. three, uh, really uh, here in Philippines, but since uh, I did not be able to finish it by then, I decided to pursue it in a new institution. Okay. Okay. Good, good. Really good. Uh, so hoping to learn more and uh, see the real value of the whole training, the whole certification with you guys. We'll, we'll try my best. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you, Omar. Thank you very much. So can I request for some more participants? Hi, good afternoon. Uh, hi, I, I am James. Sorry. Oh, James. Hi, James. You can you can continue. Uh, uh, sorry, sorry. Uh, Good day, everyone. I'm James. I'm a pharmacist uh, working as a compliance officer and a drug manufacturing here at the Philippines. So my nature of work is assessing quality assurance, risk man management, and internal audit. So I'm looking forward in learning more on how to improve my skills and knowledge on quality management to be more beneficial on our com company. Sure, sure, sure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, James. Thank you for connecting with us. Right. So can you have the next participant, please? Hi, good day. Um, you can call me. V. Good day. I am actually working right now in Ifern Corporation. It is actually a networking pharmaceutical in the Philippines. Okay. Currently handling human resources and general services departments. 
uh, basically before I also I had a training uh, in Yellow Belt. It was mm-hmm. 2012, <laughs> but I oh. was able to get certified because there was supposed to be a project, but I have I left the company before I did the project. So, okay, okay. Um, I have my expectation in terms of this is just similar to what I had experienced in my Yellow Belt training, and um, right now. Though I'm in the human resources department and general services department, I'm actually doing some um, side projects with other departments as well as their business partner. And uh, part of that is doing some change management, restructuring, and um, helping them out in terms of their processes. So this would be a good help for me in terms of, of of me helping the other departments as well in terms of me as a human resources personnel and as part of the lead for the general services department. Really a good initiative and uh, thank you for coming in. We will we have someone uh, who knows Six Sigma and uh, uh, the role which you have uh, helped us understand, I will say that indirectly you are already in Six Sigma and you're doing it. Thank you. You're welcome. So do we have some more participants to uh, introduce? Anyone left? Because I think I'm unable to make out. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, yes, I can hear you. Yeah, this is Dr. Savita with you. Uh, I'm Indian. Oh, uh, yes. Basically, I'm a RCM and insurance manager. I've been oh, in great. UAE for uh, 19 years. I would like to do my uh, Six Sigma for my project enhancement. I am uh, pursuing my career as a director and upcoming CEO. So I would like to adapt this uh, Sigma culture. I like what Mr. Abhishek said, Sigma culture. Thank you very much. So and I, I congratulate like, yeah, so you I in like advance for learn becoming more a CEO. About this. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm hoping more to learn. And uh, every year I try to update myself and do a lot of courses. This so, is really good. Uh, this is really good for everyone to follow because every year if you add something, then you summarizing yourself as a core professional. And uh, I, I'm really thank you, uh, Dr. Savita, for giving me an opportunity and uh, giving us uh, a, a chance to uh, contribute something to your certification uh, agendas. Yeah, I also saw many of the people in the LinkedIn have done this course. Yes. So, yeah, and uh, what I'm planning is, uh, what I have done is a lot of uh, financial courses, billing, revenue courses, coding, quality. I have done even my CPHQ. I have oh. done my uh, UK Notting Hill uh, Hospital Administration. Uh, really? Yeah, I have done sev- several courses. Uh-huh. Uh, I'm really feeling great to have you here. Yeah. So this year I'm planning to do something new and which is actually the important uh, thing, uh, the in thing that is a Sigma 6 uh, green belt. So looking forward to learn more. Uh, and I, I like the team. All of us are professionals working together. I'm yes. so happy to be with you all. Thank yes. you. We really have great people and great versatility uh, on this platform. So people are coming from uh, different domains and different uh, exposures all about. So probably when we, when we uh, get into this entire learning phase, uh, we'll have more inputs from people from their own venues where they're working and their own thought lines. So it will, be, it will make it more great. So thanks again, Dr. Savita. So uh, do we have some more participants to introduce him? We have few minutes, so we can, we will be starting with the program. So do we have uh, any more participants whom probably I may have left town. No, sir, good afternoon. Good afternoon. 
Yes, sir, I'm Joan Marsilia. I work here actually in Qatar. I work in the um, main hospital here in Qatar. Okay. I am a laboratory technologist. And as you know, uh, in the laboratory, uh, error is not allowed as uh, system is actually uh, finding errors. So I'd like to learn more on how we can give more accurate results uh, whereby uh, giving a uh, quality patient care because mm -hmm. uh, in the laboratory, making errors is not actually acceptable because we want to give uh, our patients an accurate and 100% uh, quality result. So I hope this uh, Six Sigma could help find our errors and uh, correct them. And uh, this uh, Six Sigma could uh, improve our processes and our quality uh, for the patient care. Yes, really, really nice, really nice James. Thank you so much. So, Joel. Right. So, have we left with any more, or uh, should should we start with the twenty? I guess we can start. Sure, sure. I think uh, I I have someone in, so let's compete with him, and then probably we'll like to start in because uh, we, we have 30 minutes, uh, which we have uh, tried knowing each other. So we have to spend some time on the program now. So uh, anyone like to complete here? So we still have one minute to start with the program. Anyone left over? All right, so I'll be starting up with uh, my Six Sigma programs and I hope uh, we have uh, gone through the IMC uh, introductions. So I will just make a quick understanding. IMC is working uh, from a quite good time into Six Sigma initiatives and project management. And they have built in a lot, many other professional programs for making better learning and better space for people to uh, take convenient learning and certification for themselves. So starting with the Six Sigma, I will first like to introduce with the DMAC model. Uh, DMAC model is something which we use for an existing process. So I hope all of us uh, whom I have heard from, they are working into some platform, some domain and uh, have been into quite from but good amount of experience. So do I have in this entire group whom, whom I can just nominate in, uh, have worked for any organization role where no process is in existence? Can I have any nomination? Sorry, what's the question again? Okay, my question is that we all in this group, we are a working professional and we have pretty good amount of experience from where which we are carrying in. So from your entire experience of uh, the time you have started working, have you gone through any organizational roles and responsibility where there was no process in existence? Anyone? Uh, okay, so I'll just... Uh... I volunteer myself. So uh, previously, I worked as a business process officer in one of uh, in Mitsubishi, and uh, actually, it's more like re-establishing the whole process of the uh, dealership uh, dealership uh, business process. That's whole, that's basically my whole job. So. Uh, I think uh, if you're asking about the experience, right? Yes. Or, okay. So basically the experience is uh, there are really, in terms of people management, there are really some uh, uh, hesitation on the part of those who will accept the new process. And uh, basically they want the process to be 
uh, most likely uh, uh, something like the process that they already used to. So they really don't like changing the process even though if i am looking at the whole process of or the whole the, or the whole way of their doing it is a bit tedious or a bit uh let's say too much in terms of the signatories uh in terms of uh the steps so if there are some duplicates so basically those are, those are the problems or uh, issues that I encountered during the time of uh, during my time in uh, process improvement. Uh, I think I think that's for now. Okay. Uh, so okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. However, I will uh, still like to come back to my question. Uh, any one of you have ever experienced uh, where you are in a role or you are working in any organization? A setup where you have seen that there is a work, where there's an ongoing work, but there's no process of it. Any one of you? Have you ever experienced this? Maybe uh, in my experience previously on my um, prior this work, uh -huh. um, I actually ha had been working uh, with a startup company. So this they, I was the first HR head that they had. So when I was in the company, there is still uh, no process at all. Uh -huh. like, for example, in human resources, there's no standard operating procedure for how to recruit the process, the procedure. And then um, in terms of handling case management, there's no process as well. So what I did was to establish that partner. I mean, the, the organization that time is just really a flat organization. So everyone is reporting directly to the um, president and the okay. CEO. So okay. basically uh, what I did was I actually partnered with some of the departments since I was initially hired for recruiting people because at that time we we're just 37. So we we're planning to grow more. In order for, to, for us to do that, we have to know, identify what our procedure is in terms of sourcing, recruiting, and hiring people and onboarding because there was nothing there. There was no platform, there was no HR orientation for the people. So uh, what I did was I actually moved to, to each of the departments who is currently in need of the head for, of, the, of the talents per department. And then we organized on how we would go about with the interview process and also how we would be onboarding those, those people in the, in the organization. So, so okay. that. There's a lot more, but I'll just focus on that. Understood, understood. Thank you. Thank you for your input. Thank you very much. So I'll just try to connect with my question, uh, with my presentation in some way. Why I've asked this question, I'll just, I will be connecting it with my presentation. Now, I hope my screen is visible to all of you. I There's a, a very nice quote, Mr. Frank Kerry. Can you all see this? Yeah. Yep. Okay, so uh, Mr. Frank Kerry tried uh, uh, helping us understand uh, with a message that our reputation for quality is only as good as the last batch of product delivered by us or the customer contact we have had. So uh, anyone who can figure out what, what the message is all about? Anyone from the team? Or can we self-experience this as a customer? Okay, uh, Shubham, this side. Yes, yeah, Shubham. Uh, yeah, is it like uh, that, uh, you know, the when the set of goods has been shipped to some team? So let's say I'm, I'm an Amazon user. So I buy some product and uh, it's like, it's all about the word of mouth and if I found that interesting, the product, so I'll be, uh, you know, conveying it to some other people, my friends and family, who, who, whosoever I talk to. Am I on the right path or am I moving out the zone? Uh, 
Uh, Shivam, I, I just skipped out. Uh, probably there was a, a disconnect. I Sorry, I was not able to hear you. Okay, okay. So what I was saying was, uh, is it something like, so let's say speaking of, uh, you know, using these Amazon services, so I buy some product from Amazon and the yes, uh, yes. moment I receive it and if I find that interesting, I either I quote some uh, recommendation or comments on the, you know, their uh, uh, product where the product has been published or either I talk to my friends and families and convey them as a word of mouth, you know, I found it interesting and, you know, it spreads as uh, uh, like a news and somewhat like that. Yes, yes, yes. So this is uh, one... Uh opinion what what we have from the message however we'll like to uh, share you the deep understanding it is for everyone who is in business and this is for everyone uh, who is a customer so for the customer he or she feels that i will only carry in my mind what i felt the last i have received what i feel it as a quality however the production department or any service setup keep delivering you service. But what you remember, you remember only the one, what you expected it and how you expected. Why? Are the other, what you have received are not a service. Probably they, they may have some deflection. They may have uh, been uh, with a little difference to what you have thought of or do you have some kind of uh, uh means acceptable level that okay i still have I, it's not that what i wanted but i guess i do have some acceptable level and i accept it but you will not remember it ever you will not remember it if it is not as per your requirement so if we are into service industry or any uh production setups or any manufacturing domains or any any area for example if this is a training business so we are imparting knowledge. And if my customer is not receiving what he is here for, he will not remember this training. Probably he will remember that, yes, he has been a part of a training, but I really don't remember what, what I have been, I've been able to take away from. So this is, a, this is a tendency of a customer. He will only remember you for what you have done, what the customer wants. So whenever, whenever we are doing something, we must not only have an intent, but we should make it the way how the customer expects it to be. And what helps us to do that? Not a normal quality setup can do it for all because a normal quality setup cannot make it a consistent one. Probably it can be a, of a competency. It can be of a capability that yes, it is capable to deliver, but how are you making sure that it will be consistent in delivering also? Then the Six Sigma comes in picture. Six Sigma is not quality, but it is being designed to make or bring quality and that consistent quality, not as an occasional quality. So if we want to make our reputation for quality, we have to make sure that my customer will only remember me for what I have given him, what he wanted from me. Else, you will be just marked that yes, I've received, but I, I, I don't, I really don't want to remember it, or will, will be wishing to remember. It. So it's not that we are going to delight the customer every time. We're not here to delight the customer, but yes, at least we are here to make what customer wants from me, and that is the intention of Six Sigma. As I, as I told, uh, Six Sigma makes something not impossible to possible, but Six Sigma makes something which is consistent. So that is the role of Six Sigma. The intention of Six Sigma is to make something consistent. The second quote we have, the ability to learn faster than our competitors may be the only sustainable competitive advantage. So in this, organ, in this uh, organizational culture we are living in and in this competitive world we are living in, every day uh, out of four big fours, every big force are coming up with something which can make them stand first. So what is making them stand first and what is not letting others 
remain on the first category always that is the ability to learn faster if you know it faster if you know it before someone then you can certainly capture the first rank however the second opinion here is i am into a garment delivery and i have done all my qc i have done all my uh, set required process of uh, developing manufacturing producing a garment uh, merchandising activities uh, making all the quality check all the compliance and my customer still receiving something uh, which is not as expected or which has some defects the moment it reaches to the customer the customer will mark you not a standard or a quality product and if you have the competency of even making a defect but realizing it before it reaches to the customer then you are safe so whenever you do something either a dhair make sure or at least make sure that you know it before your customer gets to know about it. that is a preventive point because we still can have a human error but if we cannot stop human errors we can stop the defect to reach to the customer so that is the ability we have to build in ourselves our competent model that even we are making mistake we can have some controls that it should not reach to the customer so making yourself consistent and making yourself first time right this should be a very clear intention for everything what we do then only you can achieve perfection and if you cannot achieve perfection then you cannot do six sigma now stepping into forward i will again uh, welcome everyone for the green belt program and uh, we will like to cover up something what we are going to do in this entire course program our agenda will be to understand the basic principles of lean six sigma we'll be understanding the key difference between traditional problem solving methods and the six sigma approach we will also understand the basics of six sigma demac process why we are talking demac each time because we are living in a world where we have been doing something for quite some time and we want to make it perfect that's more often we do so six sigma demac it is widely adopted and widely in practice across the globe however there are others method and uh, other approaches of six sigma but most often what we have to bring in picture is demac so we will be learning the demac process in this entire training curriculum how to use some important quality tools we will be discussing it and we will trying to set up certain examples relevant uh to a focus group which we'll be creating in in quite some uh, uh, forwarded sessions we will create a subgroup we'll create a focus group uh, who will be who will be responsible for certain examples and uh, practice of tools we will be creating an outline how the key attributes of a six sigma project should be we will be discussing the six sigma roles and responsibilities uh, we will be knowing what green belt has to do however we should also know the role of a yellow belt black belt project leader will be having sponsors and more other key stakeholders so we will be more understanding on how the communication takes place using six sigma concepts how the thinking tank or you how you should think about your organization as a collection of process because in in the present scenarios you are in an organization you are in a part of a process in which you are working however you also have to look into it that how the process should be and you have to build in your inputs and you have to determine that how the process should be so it can give me the desired output so this will be a review mechanism you will be able to relate six sigma concepts to the overall business mission and objectives while we will be using the concept of sigma level to evaluate the capability of a process or the organization and 
there is other approach which is called the dpmo but widely it is suggested to work on the sigma level because it is quite uh, convenient to make management understand because dpmo will give you numbers which is not a, a easy understanding for everyone so we'll also understand and apply the five step dmac model as a framework to organize process improvement activities so dmac is a implementation model and we have all the activities set design what to done in each phase and this is for a desire and this is for a determination this is for a objective why we are doing this improvement will also understand how to employ a wide range of process improvement techniques including the design of experiment with the dmac model will be recognizing the organizational factors that are necessary groundwork for a successful six sigma effort we will employ your six sigma skills to lead success projects as well as a process improvement to deliver meaningful results to the organization so how your skills has to be involved your skill has to be involved in a way that how you have been holding a competency to deploy the tools deploy the methods deploy the five phase step uh, deploy the concepts deploy the approach deploy the statistics of six sigma green belt however we like to tell you in the initial stage only six sigma do not have its own set of tools or test six sigma adopts tools and test from the industry best practices or from the statistical analytical studies these tools are adopted and not six sigma own tools now six sigma use these tools in the specific six sigma levels a green belt tool is like a milder tool than a black belt so green belt cannot access the black belt so in the scope of green belt we will be covering all the tools which has to be handled and engaged at a green belt level but there are much more other tools which is only handled by the black belt so six sigma is not permitted as per the discipline that green belt should handle the black belt tools if he or she is handling it should be in the presence of a black belt only we'll also be discussing lean course so in the lean course we will discuss the key principles of lean quality improvement the key lean principles and the focus on waste elimination we'll acquire skills needed to augment output following the placement customer value value streams and waste we'll recognize the practices needed to effectively relate lean to transactional and administrative processes will introduce to features of lean flow will be understanding the approach to implement lean in the organization so i will discuss about why lean is important with six sigma i have a doctor in this uh, training and i am not sure whether it is a doctor from the health industry So, Dr. Savita, you are from the health industry. Uh, Dr. Savita, am I audible? Okay, I hope some uh, uh, audio issue. So, I would like to brief in that when a doctor have a patient who probably may have fell down um, on the street. and uh, he he's impacted he has a wound and uh, when you reaches to the hospital the hospital people uh, conduct a immediate first aid so what we do uh, we try to clean up the wound and why we do that because uh, we have to make the wound clear to understand the intents of the wound understand the uh, the the wound how deep it is or what it is in actual if it is uh, covered it is shabby it is it, it is covered with a dust 
is it clearly visible can anyone say this is it visible or it can be very clearly visible what the what the bound is actually and if you don't understand the intensity probably is not be able to uh, treat it well is it necessary to clean the bound yeah i think yes so the benefit happens it's first is hygiene and uh, the second is that you'll be able to have a clear view of the bound the intensity of the bound and how much the person is impacted so it will help us decide that what should we ideally do in this situation that only a first treat will work or we have to operate it to fix it this is what lean supports us whenever you have a six sigma to do i will also come up with in what stage we do six sigma but whenever we uh, do six sigma uh, lean was not from the inception lean have never been from the inception whenever the six sigma initiatives have been uh, applied uh, the constraints happening in the industries were that whenever a six sigma is to be initiated it takes a lot of time why because six sigma tends to do a lot of analysis and lot of analysis consumes a lot of time which also was uh, impacting uh, customer patience and customer wait time so we introduced the lean to clear the wound so i can clearly see the problem i can clearly see the impact i can clearly see what is wrong i can clearly see what happened but if you have a cluttered desk you probably not be able to find your own pen because it is so cluttered so lean supports me to clean the slate if i have a clean slate i can very well understand what the platform is all about and what the status of the platform is all about so this is the role of lean in the six sigma project so that is why we called is lean six sigma initiative however six sigma is going to fix your problem for the longer run lean cannot but yes lean can give you a a wiser platform to perform so lean clears the bound lean make it hygiene lean makes it a better place to uh, conduct your studies analysis uh, understanding research and uh, identification everything So lean supports six sigma. Lean never do six sigma job, but yes, lean supports six sigma. So six sigma can really focus on what to be done and not uh, roam around everything around. So this is the intention why we bring lean in six sigma. Anyone have a question? Yeah, Abhishek, uh, Pranay this side. Yes, Pranay. So actually, uh, um, just like to highlight, this was very well explained because I was also, you know, looking on the web to, you know, know the difference why is lean attached to Six Sigma. So I could not find a, you know, a better explanation than this on the internet as well. I'm really thankful for your acknowledgement, Pranay. Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah. you can so, continue. Thank you. So, uh, Pranay and everyone, lean is also an improvement concept. Six Sigma is also an improvement concept. Both. are a concept however both are not bounded with any standards but lean is working with certain assumptions and they are made with previous experience lean is coming with eight based and nowadays it is a 12 based so we call it 8 plus 4 so lean works around based lean works around very simple thing which is called time and cost everybody have heard it everybody have been looking around it that time and cost goes along with it whether time consumes cost or whether we in inculcate more cost it means there is some more at extra time is being involved so time and cost goes hand in hand that is targeting my cycle time but cycle time is affected due to my waste so this is the peripheral in which lean moves around but six sigma don't six sigma have 100 plus tools six sigma have four plus methodologies six sigma is very clear what to do when to do how to do 
but in order to reduce the time of the project means the six sigma project timeline we make a better use of lean lean was earlier involved in manufacturing setup so it was been known as lean management or lean manufacturing but now lean is were very well working in service industry very well so now we'll uh, come back to six sigma so what is six sigma six sigma is a powerful fact based data driven methodology if i say this i'll also like to say that six sigma cannot work if there is no data or if we have a intent still to work with six sigma you have to create the data so please never feel in that if there is no data we can do six sigma if the data is there your life is easy if you don't have a data you have to build the data but data should not be assumption based it should be fact based that is why it is told that it's a powerful fact based data driven methodology because it only believes in data it never believes in someone said someone informed someone believe or someone has a confidence no 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 we don't work even with a confidence even if it is confidence you'll try to quantify in ratio and if the ratio has to come in picture the data has to come in picture so now a well defined system is called six sigma dimac now understanding the dimac process what it delivers it delivers a validated and sustainable breakthrough improvement and what we receives we receives in terms of an output like profitability productivity customer satisfaction and other critical metrics so what you can take it take away from here that from six sigma projects what are my takeaways my takeaways will be that if i conduct a six sigma my intent should be to achieve profitability from my project to ensure my productivity to ensure customer satisfaction to ensure ctqs we will discuss further the full form is critical to quality but we'll discuss in detail what is ctq so these are the intended approach or intended target what we receive from six sigma initiatives six sigma recognize the variation hinders our ability to reliably deliver high quality services and strives for the reduction of variation to near perfection level now i'll make a very quick question uh, anybody who can help me understand uh, and anyone who have not heard please please uh, you can let me know have you heard about deviation and variation to 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 this these verbias have you heard about what is deviation or what is variation are you asking asking in mathematical terms uh, probably mathematical uh, let's avoid it here because not probably uh, everyone can make make a better understanding from it but yes if you can help everyone understand and it, it you are you are please welcome variation and deviation okay i think i think deviation is like uh, uh, moving out from the consistent approach deviating from the normal Mm -hmm. I would say the COVID situation made us all deviate from whatever all was happening before, and mm -hmm. now the whatever would be happening post the pandemic situation. Mm -hmm. And uh, a variation, uh, variation, and okay. the variation is an error. Yeah. So uh, can we yeah. say that deviation leads to variation? Uh, yes, the deviation like which is not in a limit, like uh, which is not a specification beyond the limit. That is deviation. Variation is creating number or more defect like that is variation in your system. Right. So, uh, can you tell me, does deviation uh, leads to variation, or they don't have any interrelation with each other? Uh, deviation, I think no. Variation is a different uh, methodology to reduce the variation in the system, or or deviation definitely we can yeah we can correlate both system, deviation versus variation. If we reduce the upper limit and lower limit, definitely that variation automatically will uh, comes down. I think so. 
agree agree now let us understand variation what is variation see suppose your uh, your, your prescribed limit is low uh, that upper limit lower limit plus minus 5% you are you are getting uh, more than 90% values within the limit and up, uh, 10% uh, that uh, after that uh, limit prescribed limit that is called uh, your uh, variation in your system Okay. If if, if, you, if you can further lean your limit like five percent to ten percent, like three percent, your ninety five percent value, your your increase the variation like uh, so uh, values will come within the limit part, like ninety to ninety percent, five percent value coming within your uh, within the specification limit and five percent uh, uh, from the out of limit. That is variation. Okay. Can we call that if we vary? it means we are deviating or if we deviate it means we are varying from what we are doing yes yes let's let's understand from a real life understanding we have an hr in the uh, team uh, we have attendance system in every office and probably the attendance system have some bracket or maybe it is very accurate if it is 9 means 9 but you have a buffer of 5 minutes up with from 9 to 9 5 it is counted you are on time what if if you do not have a single buffer 9 means 9 even 9 dot is not accepted is it called deviation or variation if everybody is not dot 9 is it variation or deviation deviation variation deviation deviation and what is variation variation suppose your nine is a dot time or you are coming uh, see uh, that there must be some limit like now that time. if it is some standard there must be some we we have two standards 9 to 9.5 it is counted on time second scenario anything 9 or anything post 9 is counted a uh, uh, not on time any numbers after 9 is count is counted not on time uh, okay uh, uh, my guess is for your first scenario that would be your variation uh, since you established that there is a uh, a range or a limit to how when they can actually uh, log in uh, so you have new way while the second scenario is a deviation where uh, where in you already set an expectation uh, or a target yet uh, if an employee enters beyond 9 or not exactly 9 so they are already deviating from what you already said right so That's deviation the in the process designed results to the variation in the data my data will be varying for every every employee it will be a varying data but certainly due to the deviation in the designed process my process is designed that everyone must report at 9 so all those who have not reported on time it means they have deviated from the set standard and that resulted to be in variation in my data attendance data is it convincing you all or not so we can say that if uh, one employee say one for a one a single employee he is entering at two different times for two different days so that would be the variation yes okay okay but the deviation happened from the set designed process he deviated from the process the process is says that you have to be dot 9 that is different that we are not considering him on time but he is not adhering to the process also it is impact in my process adherence yes yes can we relate this with fixed ctc and variable ctc yes yes you can but however 
fixed and variable CTC is a part of a component. We have an HR who can help us understand more better. But fixed CTC and variable CTC is depending on the role, depending on the functional requirement, depending on the organizational key process. If they have a process of uh, uh, variable CTC, it, it is designed like this. So I think I, one, I should not comment on that, but yes, if it is happening randomly and it is not as what process is designed, then certainly it is it can consider as a deviated process or a variation in the process. Variable CTC will not match to everyone. It can differ from Category uh, uh, means your grade, uh, your role, your responsibilities. It will certainly vary. But again, not at the same level. Grade A all should should be one. It's not that you are at a grade A, I'm also grade A. You are getting different variable, I'm getting a different variable. But if my role demands, then it is not, it is variable because it is supposed to be. Given example, we are having a 15 minutes break. All of us joined dot 15. Somebody joined after 20 minutes, 122 minutes, 125 minutes. Is it variation or deviation? Variation, I think. And the result no. will be? I think that is deviation. Like we are joining late. So that is a deviation from that the standard deviation. time. That is deviation from the standard time of 15 minutes break. But when you look into the data, you will be having a variation in the people resuming back to the training. Correct. You will have a data which will have a lot of variance. My indices will vary for because each participant. Deviation results in variation. Because, because of deviation, variations happen. That's what I tried telling. Yeah. That do we have any relation? Yes. Thank you very much. So when we do Six Sigma, we strive to reduce the variation. In order to reduce the variation, ideally what we are reducing, we are reducing the deviation in the process. If we do not have a deviated process, it means we are on our standard. We are working as designed. We are working as per the process. If we are not following the process, if we are not adhering to the process, if we are not working as it is designed to be work, to be to be performed, it means we are we are deviated from the standard. But my every activity will result into variation in my process performance data. So six sigma strives for perfection level. But what can make you perfect? You, uh, only when you are not deviated and your devi deviation is not resulting with variation in the data. Then only you can be a perfect process. So Six Sigma strives for perfection. And the perfection makes you a quality process. Quality will never make you perfect, but your perfectness will make it a quality. Because even a one step can be called that, okay, it's a quality step. What about all? Unless and until you are in totality, quality in every step, you are not a perfect process. And if you're a perfect process, it means every indicator is resulting quality. Then only it is said to be, if you are perfect, it means you're delivering quality. And you have to be consistent though. Any questions so far? Yeah, it's clear. Thank you. Okay. Now, what Six Sigma focuses on? Can anyone have some input? Uh, I hope the presentation is clearly seen by all. Is customer focused? 
recognizes the opportunities and eliminate defects as defined by the customer. So what is opportunity? The what we what we consider as an opportunity in six sigma. It is said that six sigma is customer focused. Six sigma main interest area or the key focus area is quality or specification design. So Six Sigma will focus on the customer, but ideally my focus is on the customer expectations. And what the customer expectations are, what the customer defines. Whatever the customer will define, that becomes my customer expectations. So Six Sigma focus customer expectations. And what can be the probability? The probability can be that we cannot perform up to the expectation or we cannot deliver the expectations as defined. So whenever we are not able to deliver what is defined, it means we are making a defect. And from the Six Sigma perspective, any defect is an opportunity for improvement. So what we will be doing, we will be eliminating the defect. And as it is said, as defined by the customer, because anything what customer defines and which is not his receiving, it is a defect from his perspective. So we will not uh, define what is defect. It is our customer who will define what is defect. Now, Six Sigma promotes a systematic thinking and brings culture of continual improvement, not continuous because uh, continuous improvement can like elevation from a one level to a different level. But continual is means if something is wrong, fix it. That is the objective of Six Sigma. But to sustain it, it is a continuous process. So I hope everyone is clear with what is continuous and continual. Yes. Okay. So audit, is it continuous or continual? The audit system? Continual. Continual. Because we establish something and then we try to retain it. But if we only keep retaining it, it means it's not a competent one. But to maintain it, to sustain it, it should be continuous. Now, uh, before we enter into is 99% good enough, I'll try to uh, switch to a different uh, presentation, uh, which I would like to show here. Can you see the screen? DMAC awareness? Yes. Okay. Well, quickly uh, come to this uh, methodology. Because the moment we come to this methodology, after this, uh, when we will discuss about uh, the quality percent, why it is important, uh, the moment we will start thinking about what makes it Six Sigma. So the first is... Yes, DMAC, sorry, Abhishek, to interrupt. I think uh, the presentation is not visible. Uh, I think I have activated it. Uh, let me check it right now. You have shared the other window, I guess. Yep. Yeah, Can now, now it's there. Yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. Now, um, since we were discussing about DMAC, so uh, till the time we will not uh, fix in what DMAC has to do. 
what the Mac do? Probably then you will not be believing it, what Six Sigma can do and how it make it happen. So first, we'll making a quick 10 minutes of discussion about what ideally happens in DMAC process. The first phase of DMAC is called define. And while conducting a real life project, a real time project, in the define phase, what we do, we define a project objective, project limits, and specifying the main project aspects. So what a project is all about, project is all about an intention to improve or intention to achieve, but in the manner, in the discipline of project management. All set of activities, what we do in Six Sigma, sincerely we follow the methodology, but we, conduct it with project management disciplines. So project management discipline says that something which have a start or an end and start with a specified end, it is not a project. So we have a start and end, which is called defined to control. So the every phase what we have is define, measure, analyze, improve, control. So they are called the five phase methodology or five step improvement process. So the first step is define. In define, we define the project objectives. Why are we doing this project? So uh, considering the training, everyone has their own objectives, what they wanted from the training and what they are looking forward from this training. Similarly, whenever we are doing a Six Sigma project, either we are adopting DMAC model or any other model, we have to define the objective, why we are doing it. Along with this, project limits, because we cannot make it an assumption-based project. My project should be very well specific to what I want from it, and I'll not be deviating to everything what I, what I can get from it. No, even if I am getting more than the desired benefits, I may come up to a project B. But in this project, I will only target, I will only focus, I will only concentrate to what I am willing to do and why I am doing this. This should be your highest discipline. So you have to define your limits in this project that this is A, B, C, D, what I'm targeting only. No E, what I will focus on. However, from A, B, C, D, even if you are not capable of driving results from every set project scope, you will still specify the main aspect that out of my A, B, C, D, C remains my main interest of project and this I will achieve else it will be a failed project. My project will only be a successful project when I achieve my main project aspects, but you have to define it. You have to define what is your main aspect behind being the project. More than this, you will set a project team. You will appoint it and you will set a necessary working conditions. We'll establish a working conditions and working culture so they can perform. Even in the defense, when, you are, when your uh, team is going for a war, you have to create a conditions for them to perform. Else, the, even they are capable, they cannot perform. There is a lot of support system which we'll be studying in the detailed defined phase. But this is discussed here to in, make the intent clear that what are we actually doing it? Now, we will also come up with customer. Who is my customer? Because unless you know who is your customer, you will never get to know the importance of what you're doing. 
because whatever you are doing if you know even i'm driving a car i need to know who is my customer am i driving a, a public car am i driving a private car i am driving a commercial car so i need to know who is my customer so i can configure my mindset how i have to deliver it. so knowing your customer is extremely important and at the same time knowing your customer requirement is equally important if you know your customer but if you don't realize his requirements you not be able to perform so this is also a important aspect of define phase the final thing what we build in the define phase is the process to be improved is to describe when you are defining something you also have to detail what process you are improving and from and within the process what is to be improved not only what you are improving the entire process you will describe and then within the entire process what are the aspects you are improving in this project this is to be introduced and when you are detailing a process it should be from the initial to the final points you are not going to uh, discriminate that okay this is not a part of the deliverable so let's avoid it no whenever you are making a process map it should be in all so your study is never incomplete and you never probably will miss that it can be a direct or indirect beneficiary of my set target phase what i am improving in this process the second phase of the project is measure phase so whatever we have defined now you are supposed to measure it and what we do in the measure phase we create meaningful and objective data now why it is said meaningful and objective if you are extracting something in the measure phase what you are been working in the defined phase so i want to tell all of you the defined phase is a proposal stage i can as a six sigma person i can as a green belt i can keep exploring the area to improve but what is the manner of producing it to the management for taking the decision defined there can be several defined what you can create there can be various defined which you can propose however not all defined gets approved so it is not to be said that if you are starting defined you have to end with control defined is a proposal stage but the actual execution comes when you get the project approvals so with the help of defined phase my target is to get project approvals and the moment i get the project approvals then only i will be having a right to access the data so during the defined phase there will be a question that in what data we work on the data which we are building because we don't have the access to data but we really have a strong gut a strong hint that something is wrong i have to make it right so with that belief with that strong notion you are stepping in but since you have limitation that you cannot access the data then you will structure it you will create it you will build it and you will produce it and even the management understand that you are coming up with your best ever understanding from what you are experiencing so it is not called assumption data but certainly it is called anticipated data so there is no problem pushing anticipated data for getting project approvals but once you get the project approval it is your job to come up with the real time data so that is what we start doing like building a data collection plan and from the data collection we will start extracting meaningful and objective data so far clear now uh, question can i have a question yeah please Sorry. uh okay. uh earlier you said that uh, during the measure uh you will most like we will most likely uh see some items to be defined so are you saying that uh we can still update the define or we can still add 
define um, things to define in the defined right during the process of uh, measurement i i think uh, if i have understood you correctly in the process of define we will define uh, what we are experiencing and what we really find that it can be improved and if we improve it what the improvement can result to but they all are anticipated data because define phase is a formal phase of getting or seeking management approvals of executing a real time project yes. the real time activity starts from the measure phase when you have the approval from the define phase and in the measure phase you can actually step into the process and collect all the real time data okay unless you um, have the project approvals you cannot access the real time data okay yes this is a constraint but this okay. is but this is also a contradiction that you have to produce a very real time data understand to the management that this is what you are because when you are defining it it means you are mentioning sure. it and if you are mentioning it it means you cannot mention the assumptions yeah so you have to be very sure what you are telling to the management you cannot just put your assumptions so the define phase takes a lots and lots of exercise because we are trying to say something which we really don't have an access to prove but since we are claiming that this is wrong and this can be improved you have to be sure what you are trying to say Okay. so there is lot of research lot of research and there is lot of conclusions before defining to the management okay uh, makes sense uh, thank you you well suppose uh, you have appeared in exam and without testing a paper i am saying that sorry you you probably there is no chance of you passing this exam how i am saying this even without checking the paper think about the situation but i have to claim to the management that probability of passing student is not even less than 10, more than 10% how you are going to say that what will be what makes you say that then it will be your all past study that people have not been taught well they have not been studying they have not been uh, uh, very much prepared so my confidence level says that passing uh, uh success rate of this exam uh, can should not be more than 10% because everything in the past doesn't uh, proves it so this is how the statistics plays role when you have a cricket your your lot of anticipation comes that this team is going to win how you claim it are you magician are you an astrologer no you don't but how you claim it without it has happened this is the research what we have to do in the defined phase you have to go into every activity every past incidences every past uh, uh, things happening around and then you have to come up and say that this is wrong and this is i claim it is wrong and i also claim that is it it is improvable and i also claim that i will improve it to this degree everything you have to say in the defined phase even without accessing the real time data this is the this is the opportunity you have to do in six sigma and that's why people say six sigma is a magic how can you even prove without even doing it but we have to prove in the defined phase i will in the future uh, session i'll show you some uh, uh, real time defined phase in which when you will study the documents you study the business case you study the project charter which has been forwarded for the management approval you will see that it is very well said this is wrong and this if we improve this will be the improvement level how are you saying that even without even doing it but this is what you have to do in the defined phase you cannot help yourself with it. but the moment you are succeeded you have the approval you have all the powers given by the management then you will jump in with the real time data probably you may have to go back and correct your defined phase 
the moment you interact with the real time data then there can be probability that you have to correct yourself that okay i i i think i was wrong so there it happens many various time it happens but if you are working with a good black belt team then there is this it, it will not sound like this in in your project so coming back to the measure phase uh, in the measure phase we actually interact with the meaningful and objective data instead of making a mere assumption about the process efficiency and customer requirement because now we are interacting with the real data uh, this establishes to what extent customer requirement are already being satisfied with the present procedures so my measure phase will tell me that i was working with defects but even working with defects i was performing so what is your potential this you have to study in the measure phase and as well as what is defect you have to measure what is defect means i know a defect but i have to measure the quantum of the defect this is your two job measure the quantum and also claim that my this is my process capability that even with the defect it is performing what if i unleash it what if i remove the defects it will certainly enhance my process performance because if you can run when you are tied with a stone in your feet and what if i remove the stone from your feet you will run faster because you have potential because but something was pulling you back so in the major phase i will de declare that my customer requirement are already being satisfied with the present procedure irrespective of the present procedure is affected with certain defects clear everyone clear yes clear thank you now stepping into the analyze phase the analyze phase what it do the data is analyzed in order to identify improvement needs and improvement possibilities the reasons for not satisfying customer requirements are identified and evaluated together with the relevant error and ratios so far the measure works with the data but the analyzed works with the percentage because it want to be more sure and not just play around the numbers so talking in percentage is more not only just quantified but qualitative and quantification both comes in picture once we are through with the analysis done then we will be going back to the management for again an approval because once you have done your analysis then you are supposed to bring change so to bring change you have to take change approval this is again like define phase we take approval similarly in the improve phase we take approval before improving it so the improve phase is distinguished in two stage the first stage is producing the improvement ideas producing the improvement model producing the approach how you going to improve if that is accepted that is confirmed and that convinces the management then only you can apply the changes or improve what you want to do if you do not have an approval irrespective of your analysis irrespective of you have confirmed something is not wrong you cannot change it so improve is solutions are developed to rectify problem causes to optimize the process and thereby to satisfy customer requirements better this is followed by the preparation of detailed cost and benefit analysis because we have to wisely look into that at what cost we are bringing what level of improvement if my improvement level is or or if my improvement is not convincing the cost or the cost is not convincing the improvement i might not get the improvement acknowledgement or permission from the management so you have to be very very careful at what cost what you are trying to improve now the identified solutions are checked for their suitability in the first place so even if you get the management approval you ideally should not improve wide process you have to reduce your stake you have to mitigate with the challenges 
because once you have an ongoing process and if you are intervening into the process to make change, which means you are uh, bringing some uh, stops, bringing some uh, hindrances, bringing some uh, delays, because if, because if you're op being operated, you are silently sleeping to get operated. So you are not working at that time. Or if you're working or not working your full pace. So to bring in a change, you have to actually access the real time process and ongoing because you're working on an ongoing process. DMAC works only on ongoing process. So you will not take a risk of implementing it in totality because what if the entire improvement implemented after bring more challenges? So we apply in a very small bits. We see the acceptance. We see the real time improvement and results from the improvement. If we are confident, if we are convinced, if we really feel reliable that all this, this improval is, improvement is not ma making more challenges, it is really working fine. Then later, we will start replicating it in the entire process or entire area targeted for improvement. So you should always go for first practice test. So your stake is less in this case. The last phase is the control phase, which is uh, technically not uh, any improvement to be done, but yes, what is improved should be sustained. What is improved should keep performing. What is improved should not be affected or impacted by new challenges. So to, in order to maintain that, we create a control phase. And in the control phase, it is said that the process which has now been optimized is monitored with regards to its effectiveness in satisfying customer requirements. To achieve this, it is transferred to a process owner and integrated into day-to-day -day operations. In this way, it is ensured that, ensured what process improvement continues long-term, that the same problems do not arise after a given period of time in the following 12 months. Ideally, the control is only decided based on the sensitivity of the process you are improving or the challenges you have improved only based on that. It can be three months, six months, eight months, 12 months. It is systematically measured by the process owner where the expected project benefit really materializes. It means the improvement, even if it is done and it is resulting, and if it is not resulting in the long run, means it is not a successful project. But if it is capable of running long and giving a consistent project, it means it is materialized with the improvement done. And now the improved process is a new normal, which we have been hearing a lot after pandemic, that this is new normal. So we being in Six Sigma, we have been experiences quite from a very long time. The normal has been pulled to improve and put back to again work like normal. So the new normal is the improved new process. So this is uh, what everything happens in the TMAC and this is how the results comes in. So now when I switch back to the previous slide where I took a pause, uh, just allow me to go back. Uh, is it visible to all? Is 99% good enough? Yes, it's visible. Okay. Now, we will just uh, work out with, uh, I, I hope not many people understand it also, that 99% is good, but what it, that 1% holds, what that one person hold is important to understand. Now, can we have uh, a, a person who can help me uh, read out the 99% so I can cover up the six sigma differences? Uh, Vishnu, can you help me with this? 
uh, you want to read uh, what is the nine nine percent, right? Yes, yes, yes. More than uh, uh, more than one hundred ten percent of the newborn babies accidentally drowned by the landfill and mm -hmm. each year. Right. Second is no electricity for eight no electricity for eighty five hours each year. Third is no television trans uh, trans transmission. For nearly 64 minutes per week. Four, four, three, four short or long landings per day, like in the like airways. 16 railway accidents per day. Last is 16 minutes per week of unsafe water supply. Now, even at 99%, if this is the ratio or this is the count. Then can we say that 99% is good enough? Can we afford this, this quantity? Can we, can we afford, can we accept this quantity of defects? No. Depends. Depends. Depends on uh, 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 the acceptable, acceptable level or depends on the scope of improvement. If there is no uh, scope of improvement, you have to survive with this. I think uh, I think it depends on the situation because uh, for example in in healthcare ninety nine percent definitely is not good enough because uh, we all know that uh, in dealing with uh, something that human. relates to in yeah in human dealing with the human life. Uh, do you, you're dealing with a sensitive process, so there you cannot take a stake. You cannot or afford a one percent. One percent you cannot afford. And here, yeah. here you can see what that one percent hold. Yeah. The difference. Example, the yeah. The difference. <laughs> can you see the difference of one percent? And six sigma works within that one person to bring this change but it's, uh, i think it's more on the newborn babies the unsafe water every five years the two railway accidents i guess from a, la a lakh ten thousand newborn we have reduced to 38 newborns from no electricity for 85 hours we have done it for nine minutes in five years not only the the hours is reduced but the sustainability is there that it's happening in every five year or maybe in, in a duration of five years no television transmission for 64 minutes per week and now it's happening 11 minutes in 10 years so this is the reduction and consistency see in the reduction so this is the space of one person where Six Sigma plays its role. Four short and long per day. Now it's happening one short or long every two years. So Six Sigma does not only desire to reduce the defect, but it desires to make it so sustainable, so reliable, so consistent, so confident that it's not going to happen. It has been tested in such a deep intense level that it do not leave any stone unturned, that it can lead to a probability to turn something which is right into a defect. That makes this 10 year difference, 10 years. This is how it, it works. This is how it works. And how we bring this change, I tried telling you in the DMAC study, which in the previous slide. This is the activity we do in DMAC to bring this change. And those are the activities which we are required to do to bring this change. Now, to uh, proceed from here, I will uh, request all of you for a 15 minutes break and uh, then we can resume dot from the time. So all of you comfortable with the 15 minutes break? Yeah, sure, yeah. sure. Thank you. Yeah, sure, sure. Thank you. Sure. Thank you, all of you. We'll resume on time.
Yeah.
Welcome all of you, welcome back. Hello. Hello there. So we'll be starting with uh, what is Six Sigma technically known as, and uh, what are the other verbatims which is uh, ideally used uh, to name a Six Sigma. Uh, the term Six Sigma means uh, different things when viewed from different viewpoints. It is at the same time a symbol, a process measure, a benchmark, a method, a tool. So let us examine some of the viewpoint of Six Sigma here. Now, how, how it proceeds? In the initial stage, uh, it looks like a symbol, like a standard deviation we have heard in the Infusion Six Sigma logo. It seems to be that it is using uh, the Greek symbol or a symbol of standard deviation. But the moment you start making it as a use of a measure, like a, a measure, okay, what is the deviation in the process? So that moment it start becoming a process measure. Then the sigma level, three sigma, four sigma, five sigma, that becomes benchmark for the industry. And as you start applying the methodologies like the map and others, I will just talking about in the, in, in the future slide, it becomes a method. And when you start diagnosing the improvement ideas or the possible improvements to be done, it start becoming a tool for improvement because the Sigma brings sort of tools for your analysis, evaluation, research, study, tests. So this becomes a tool to improve. Now, stepping from here, as a symbol, six sigma is a, a level, but sigma is a Greek alphabet. Mathematicians use this symbol to signify standard deviation. So I hope a lot of us understand uh, and have heard about in, in the maths and, and statistic calculus. So there uh, a standard deviation was used for the data distribution study. So this measure, this measure of variation is done through standard deviation. So we'll be talking everything in detail here we are just trying to make the inductions clear. 
Now, uh, below there's a diagram which if you can see that this line is called the baseline. This dotted line in center is called the target. And this baseline is for the process performance stage. This is here where the process performs. This wide variation shows that you have lot of deviation in the process. This small variation graph shows you have less deviation in the process. If you have less deviation, it will represent to be a small variation. Now, how it, what makes it represents? In the next slide, we will understand. Here, you can see how as per the sigma level, as per the process measure outcomes, when we look that, uh, which process is a four sigma process, three sigma process, or a six sigma process. It, this is how the process graph will look like. It is just known as bell-shaped curve or a normal curve or can be called as normal distribution. So this distribution is the variation within your process, which is a result of the standard deviation how many standard deviation can fit within the process so here if you can see that if you can if you have a six sigma process this is how your variation will look like considering this bar and the bar in the left side they are called lower specification limit the bar to the right side is known as upper specification limit so both Specification limit is given by, can anyone answer who provides specification limits? Customer. Customer, and it will always be customer. Certainly in the training sessions, if we decide that the curriculum is designed to be completed in 30 hours, as an example, and audience who receives the training are they who decides the duration or is it the training company or the training expert or the SME will decide the how much time that it will take to complete the training. Can anyone help me answer? Who is the customer? Who will decide? I think audience will decide. Right. How about if the audience says that I have only 20 hours and, uh, and the curriculum is uh, like, uh, cannot be done less than 30 hours. Who will decide the specification limit? The organizers, the organizers. See, when you give me your expectation, you become a customer. When I give you your my expectation, I become your customer. So we have to look into that the viewpoint, who stands customer from which perspective. If I have to announce the results, I am your customer. You have to perform from the study. But when you set your expectation that this is what I want to learn and this is the amount of time only I can invest and you are my customer and I have to con include it in that amount of time, irrespective of how much ideally it is supposed to be. A green belt content, given the example, if it's supposed to be done in 30 hours, and if my customer specifies that we have only 20 hours in which we can take the trainings, I have to constitute it in such a way that you become Six Sigma Green Belt and without any compromise or skips. I have to make that design, else it will be called a defect in process, that I was not competent to make it a design which can deliver in 20 hours. So uh, every time when you have a customer, you design the training in such a way that it achieves customer expectations. 
so it will be always whether you are a product owner or a process owner i become a subject owner it will be ideally it should be me who is telling that okay this is the amount of time you have to give but if you tell me this is the amount that i have then i have to make it in that way give an example in aviation industry flying to australia flying to us it's not less than a 15 18 hours of job and uh, you say that i don't have more than 10 hours is it possible for the aviation industry to make a flight uh, duration of 15 hours to reduce to 10 hours no not possible then how we treat it we treat it as out of scope irrespective of customer saying because in this case what we understand we understand that we have to take logical expectations if expectations are not logical we cannot customize it we cannot design it we cannot deliver it so it's 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 good that a customer can say that okay design the training which is of 30 hours in 20 hours it is still acceptable but if it has been said that 10 hours i'll say no sorry cannot do it so i have to take logical expectations from customer this is our job customer can say what he wish we cannot say no but we should be logical or we should treat the customer so he represent logical expectations so you have to take care of this also so specification limit will always be given by customer but controls is always given by anybody process owner i think process owner yes process always the process so if i have to conclude a 30 hours training in 20 hours i have to prepare that level of controls that it achieves the same result which it ideally achieves in 30 hours so i have to make that level of control so we can optimize the, so we can make it customer expectations as per now coming back to the graph here you can you see the four sigma process this this variation is close to the customer specification comparing to six sigma level you can see you have a scope of control scope of chance to improve and here in three sigma you are verge to be defected you are already reached customer expected line or specification given by the customer any single mistake or any chance of mistake can make you a defective process yes anybody wants to say something any question no question shall we proceed further no yep. okay now we will understand uh, what this sigma level comes from sigma 6 this is a level of sigma at sigma 6 the defects which is accepted by the industry which is mostly service and manufacturing industry mostly we accept a level of 3.4 defects per million opportunity and we say that we are working great and we are at sigma level 6 so what is my quality percentage can anyone confirms me what is the quality percentage mentioned here quality percentage uh, 3.4 defect per million right no that is my dpmo that is my 3.4 is my defect quality rate percentage almost 100 percent you are achieving the quality almost but we are not saying 100 percent because we can never be we can never be 100% It's close in to 100%, 100% 
we cannot say we are perfect we can say that uh, uh, we are striving for nearest perfection or we can say that we are working upon perfection can anyone say that what is the perfection level what can 99, you define that if this is perfect 99.9997% Yes, this is almost 100% or can be said as nearest to 100%. So this is the acceptance level in the industry for sigma level 6. Comparing the difference of sigma level 5, we have how many defect ratio? 233. And the quality percentage? 99. So you can see the change. You can see the change. The both are 99%. But a very, very macro level difference can make a difference of 3.4 to 233 defects. However, yield is also known as defect-free quality. So when you look into the perspective that, okay, how many defects we are working with, we will say that we are working with 3.4 defect. Or we will ask you, can you tell me the defect-free quality we have right now? Then we will talk about yield only and not DPMO. Similarly, when we work on four sigma level, we have 6,210 defects. And here the yield is? 99.4%, so all are 99. But at each sigma level, you are decreasing with higher the defect, lower the sigma level is. And the lower the sigma level is, the lesser quality percentage you are working with. So you will reduce the defect rate to increase the sigma level and increase the quality percentage. They are proportionate to each other. So world-class performance are somewhere at sigma level six. Industry benchmarks talks about four sigma and achieves to five sigma. Non-competitive organizations are three sigma, two sigma, and one sigma. So also to your best of the knowledge, and we have ISO people in the system, when you make a process ISO compliant and the moment you run sigma level calculation, you will see that a process which was earlier non-competent, unorganized, unstructured, unshaped, and I have made it at least ISO 9001 QMS compliant. The sigma level calculator will tell you the result that it has achieved by default three sigma level which is still working with DPMO of 66,807 and a quality percent of 93%. And ISO QMS process is still having a defect of 66,000 as per Six Sigma standards. And the quality is only 93%. This is for your information only. Now, we will talk about simple methodologies. What these methodologies are and in which situations they work. Six Sigma is a scientific method to apply. Uh, yes. Uh, actually, I missed some sessions in the earlier part. Can I ask you what is a DPMO? DPMO is defect per million opportunity. A defect in the process when you are assessing the opportunities and we spoke that opportunities are chance of defect to happen. Any opportunity in the six sigma term is the chance to have a defect is called opportunity. So we assess the opportunity per at a, at a scale of per million. Given the 1 million chance, given the 1 million opportunity, we will rate the defect ratio here, which is 3.4 DPMO. That means uh, in the service sector and the manufacturing sector. Service and manufacturing, both. 
they work they work with same acceptance level probably not in uh, in 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 the place where you have a human lives on stake we will not say that okay we are good we have 3.4 deaths we will not say that we are good we are having 233 death cases no we will not say that so in 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 any place you have a chance of high stake of finance or a stake of a human life we will not say that we are okay with six sigma level yeah. yes yeah. Uh, i i think i have not been able to understand can any questions to be answered for me uh you talk a dpm or now i got clear so on the way I, I think I will be able to like uh, more details. Okay, okay, thanks. Now we'll talk here the methods. Now the each method has their own a uh, reason to apply. As discussed so far, DMAC is applied only in an existing process. Only in an existing process. If a process holds an existence, then only DMAC is to be applied, and I can prove a reason. can you improve something which do not exist please help me with your answers can you improve something which does not exist no so the the answer is here why and where the dmac can be applied why we apply dmac and where we apply dmac is only in an existing process because we have i factor which is called improvement so six sigma is a scientific method to apply tools for business problem solving the two basic six sigma methodologies are dmac and dna db dmac stands for define measure analyze improve control and what are the doables and the deliverables which we have gone through in the previous slide and coming to the dma dv it is known to be again d stands for define m stands for measure a stands for analyze d stands for design instead of improvement and v stands for validate instead of control so dma dv works on a new design and design is somewhere we do where something is not in existence so dma dv can be done given the example if you have never heard, ever heard about touch screen 10 years back how the touch screen has been invented how the human hand gesture how the automation how the robotics came in picture have they been in existence ever no they have not so they have been designed they have been validated what and how it was defined what where what we validate we validate the design from the define so something which has never been in existence and in that situation we use dmadv so dmac is a best approach for existing product or process and dmadv is the best approach for designing a new product or a process please remember and most of the certification programs teach dmac dmadv dfss dmad ob or design of uh, six sigma they uh, are not very much in practice for certification but yes they are also a model to get certified into so they have a different set of syllabus different curriculum different tools uh, different studies so that is not the scope in this certification we will be studying dmac and once we are competent with dmac then you will be more competent to learn dma but you should know what are the other methods now six sigma as a tool six sigma contain broad set of tools both qualitative and quantitative they are interwoven in business problem solving methodologies which helps in choosing a project 
Why? Because your data study, your data research, your data analysis, your data interpretation support systems helps you to choose a project. It helps you to design new products. It helps you to improve the current process. It helps you to reduce the downtime. It helps you to work on customer response time. So improvement, reduction, enhancement, efficiency building, they are most of the reasons why we do Six Sigma DMAC approach. Now, does Six Sigma apply everywhere? I had a question earlier about process. So wherever there is a process, there is a scope of Six Sigma. But we have to wise enough that at what cost we are improving. And what we are improving, does it deserve to be invested that amount of cost? So Six Sigma can be done everywhere. Six Sigma can be applied everywhere. Six Sigma can be used everywhere. But you have to very well accept the fact that Six Sigma is an expensive affair. The resource itself are a cost. So making a, a basic improvement, you will not introduce Six Sigma, irrespective of it can be applied. Or if you are free, or if you if you if you if, if everyone know what Six Sigma, everyone can do it, then Six Sigma will be applicable in day-to-day -day activities, your lifestyle, your home, your office, your social, your commercial, your official, everywhere Six Sigma can be applied. So, uh, yes, yes, Vishnu. Yeah, not this one here. How it will correlate with the uh, ISX? I think you have to be a little louder, please. How it will get uh, correlated with the ISO? ISO. Okay. ISO is somewhere which helps me build in my SOPs, standards, and standard guidelines, isn't it? So when I say my process baseline, so what is my process baseline? Constituting an ISO help me establish a organized process, which is allowing me to skip off with a lot many brainstorming. If I have made the quick fixes, lean is a quick fix support system. ISO is streamlining the process with the standards and guidelines. Someone who don't even have any rules and regulation driving on the street and he don't know how to drive even a car. Maybe and when I say driving means not the driving skill, but the rules and regulation. What if you have taught him rules and regulation, but he still makes a mistake? That is a probability of a chance to make a mistake, which a Six Sigma can fix. But Six Sigma investing time in teaching him the rules and guidelines is more time taking. So ISO is a great support system to at least make the process compliant. However, to make it optimized, Six Sigma is, is there to help it. ISO is a great system to convert an unorganized process to an organized process. ISO organizing a particular system in a particular standard. But, uh, yes, giving Six, Sigma, Six Sigma has a direct calibration with QMS. All right. Yeah. ISO QMS, 9001. Yeah, I have that. So 9001 is about quality management system. Yeah. And QMS, when you apply a QMS, you apply SOPs, you apply standards, you create a lot of uh, industry standard designs, policies, procedures, yeah. set of instructions, guidelines. Yeah. So what it helps, it helps a lot to be more organized yep. instead, of, instead of a bear. Yep. So, yeah. So in what level uh, Six Sigma uh, added benefits to ISO? Uh, uh, dear, can you be a little louder? I think I'm having difficulty in understanding. Little louder, please. One moment. In what level Six Sigma 
adding benefits to our ecosystem, especially the quality management system. Okay, if pardon me if I have not heard you correctly, uh, what I am able to understand, uh, when ISO is implemented, and when you run a Six Sigma study to understand what Sigma level the process is, Sigma level the process is performing, it tends to be achieving three Sigma level. Okay. From a non-competent, non-organized system, you become an organized system and even achieving a level of three sigma. So now your target becomes from three sigma to four or three sigma to five. Directly targeting three sigma to six sigma is not a very logical decision because we have to be realistic. We cannot do magic over the night. So we target three sigma to four, four to five, or if, if the possibility is then we target from three to five, but never directly three to six, because we have to be realistic. Yeah. 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 So a uh, six sigma method supply everywhere. Six sigma is a rigorous methodology for application of structured problem solving tools. And the answer it applies wherever defects can be defined. So a very root answer. Defects can be defined when there is a set of process or a process defined. So we cannot work on a process which is not defined. If you cannot define a process, you cannot define a defect. So in order to define a defect, you have to be a process. And if there is a process and if you can define a defect, you can apply Six Sigma. However, you have to be wise enough to make sure that the CBA is applied very largely. So, Sigma can be applied. I can do anything everywhere, but I have to see the feasibility of the cost of it. So this is, we have to be looked into. So you can look down the DMATV and DMAC can be initiated in manufacturing, IT, service, construction setups. And it is widely used in transactional quality and commercial quality, widely. Because they results into numbers, profits, revenue, efficiency. So these are the regions where Six Sigma is applied. Now, a very important space. I hope it is visible to every one of you. Yep. So yes. about methodology selection, and uh, you can see that methodology of DMAC is, is not necessarily that if you have an existence process, you have to have only demand in your mindset. There is a guideline that, yes, we will be applying demand if we have an existing process. And we, there is a guideline that if you do not have this process, you will go for DMADV. But that, there is something more to talk. Now, the conditions are process already exists Yes, you will go for DMAC, which we have been talking. If no, then there is something called DSSS and DFSS. DSSS is designed for Six Sigma software and DFSS is designed for Six Sigma, which we will be understanding with one more of my slide presentation, which I will show all of you. However, Right now, let's take it uh, in this understanding that if the quality for process already exists, but it needs to be redesigned. If the answer is yes, then you will not go for DMAC because it is, if it is to be redesigned, then it is not a ongoing process. We have to change the process. So if we are changing the process, we will go for DFSS, means we will design the process as per Six Sigma guidelines. And there will be no improvement to be done in the ongoing and the current process. But if the process does not require any redesign, we will move forward for the DMAC. But again, one more toll gate. Current process has reached entitlement. It means entitlement says that we are done with the improvement. And is there, there is no scope of improvement. That is the one thought. The second thought that improvement is done so far, but we need to optimize it or we need to, we need something more from it. Like 
a process which is very robust, but we want to make it automation. So when you have an automation, you are not just improving it, you are bringing something new into that. So if the entitlement has reached, means you have improved to the best, now you, you don't want to improve, but you want to make it something different or you want something more from the process, then we will not do DMAC. We will do DFSS. But if you see that there is still a scope to improve, then we will kick off with the DMAC. Everyone understanding is clear that only by seeing existing process DMAC we don't jump to. We have to look into a couple of more factors process exist, is the redesigning required, has the process, process reached entitlement. So these factors you have to look before even kicking off the map or before even developing a defined phase for the management to approve for the project. So all clear so far? Yes. Design for Six Sigma. It is also a methodology. Uh, no, no, DSS is, is designed for Six Sigma software. So nowadays, when you say automations, automation, you have RPA, robotics. So when you construct these softwares, these automated applications, and the applications are being constructed based on Six Sigma guidelines, it is called Six Sigma software. Clear to all? Okay. Any questions from here? I guess I, I am not able to hear properly. Can you please repeat? I hope I can move forward. I really afraid I'm unable to pick out. However, uh, I was willing to know if any questions from here or can I move forward? Yes, yes, you can proceed. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. Now we have gone through this uh, in the previous uh, different slide, but making it very quickly over here for all of you, the Six Sigma DMAC process basics, the objectives of each phase, the defined phase run with identifying the product or process to be improved, determine what resources are required for the project. Measure phase will be doing, defining the defects, gathering the baseline information about the product or process, and establish improvement goals. Because at this stage, we know what is the problem and how much the problem is. In the analyze phase, we will examine the data collected in the measure phase to determine the prioritized list of source of variation. Because in the analyze phase, my job is not just to get everything what the measure is submitting me. Measure may submit me 10, 100 access to improve. But in analyze phase, I will check with the relevance that ideally, which X to improve, which can really change my Y, which can really improve my Y. And Y is denoted with uh, abbreviation, whereas in the problem which we decide to improve, it is called Y in the project. The problem which we are improving is denoted with the abbreviation called Y. Now, Improved phase will optimize the solution and confirm that the proposed solution will meet the quality improvement goals for the project. Control phase ensures that the improvement to the process once implemented will be sustained and that the process will not revert to its prior state. The intention behind reading it again and again is my, 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 in, my simple interest that it gets adopted by all of you. You, you, when the moment you adopt my purpose of every phase, while studying the phase in specific, you will be very clear that what this phase role is in the Six Sigma project.
so before uh, studying the cost of poor quality i will again switch to uh, a different slide uh, just to make little more clear understand can all of you see the dmac approach here yes okay now i would be needing a lead uh, who can join me and uh, take a little flow diagram understanding or speak about the flow diagram understanding anyone who will like to join me Yeah. Anand, Vishnu, anyone? Yeah, I will. Okay. So so far we have discussed about the phase, what the phase do, what the phase role is in the project. So taking or correcting the understanding, can you uh, try describing the uh, phase role and the flow diagram? How the phase flow is? What are the decision making factors? Uh, where to proceed? Where to stop? Can you take a lead, please? Yeah, actually. <clears throat> Uh, define project goals and deliverables. From there, we go to the match the organization. And uh, whether we we'll go with only with the D means define, right? From again, D uh, is defined, but define has a approval level. The yeah. define which you do before the approval, the define we do after the approval. And like initially, from uh, define project goals and deliverables, we'll approach the organization. Once we give the, we will get the approval from the organization. The organization will only approve when it matches to my organization goals and objectives. Whatever you come to me, I want to improve, and it has no relevance to my organization goals and objectives. I will not approve it. Ah, uh, once we get the organization approval, we'll go to the define current process. No? The moment I have the organizational approval, and the organization will only approve when my improvement is contributing to organizational goals and objectives. Then I will define the current process. Yeah. From then, uh, uh, from then we will go to the measure analysis, okay. measure analysis measurement system. Again, from measure analysis, uh, measure analysis measurement system, we we'll go to the measure. Process baseline. From there, again, we'll uh, meet the uh, concern organization. We'll have the uh, project goals. I think I'm saying the right. Or just uh, please, please proceed. Please proceed. Yeah, uh, project goals. From once we had a project uh, project goal with the current organization, we'll go to the. Establish the control system. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, means uh, in in, uh, in, me in measurement we'll analyze us no analyze and we we'll measure the process. At that time we can establish a new new we can adapt the new systems. So we can take the permission from the concern project uh, concern organization, and we can establish here the new con uh, control systems that like new adaptable. Uh, any new con new adaptability or new system something like that. Uh, from there, again there is uh, two different approaches are there. Like project tools and there again uh, in project meeting again we can take the some inputs from the organization and we can develop the process. Okay, and uh, again we can for every uh, the basically for uh, whenever we want to adapt new system or new thing, we need to take the permission from the concerned organization, 
and whereas and, and we need to know whether it will come under the budget or not that is a basic concern for each meeting okay thank you thank you very much vishnu anyone uh, have a different understanding what vishnu has conveyed anybody anyone one likes to say about this uh, flow diagram uh, your opinions your understanding try to take it as an exercise please Uh, actually, sir, uh, this is a good uh, flow chart where we can implement. I think in almost all the organization, whether it be a healthcare or finance or HR, anywhere. Very the true. The basis, yes, the basis are the same. The basis are the same. Very, very true. I was looking for this answer, yes, and sir. I will also like to uh, say uh, uh, something to add to this. Uh, what you have been able to read from the image, that is one part. Second, what is not written here is that Six Sigma approach, Six Sigma DMAT approach technically called, never says that you have to begin at a phase and end only when you conduct the control. It says that the moment in any stage fixing applications like measure, analyze, improve. If you see that your fixing is achieving or earning the same result what is desired by the organization goes and objectives and your project goes and deliverables. One is organization goes and objective. One is project goes and deliverables. At any stage, your process achieves project goals and deliverables, you can immediately establish a control system and conclude the project. You may not require to keep on going irrespective of your project goals and objective, which is in calibration with organization goals and objective, and you have to keep it unless you improve it. There can be some fixes also through which you can achieve it. And those fixes takes place in the defined phase to measure phase, not in defined phase. But your actual execution is starts from measure phase. Define never should be called an execution phase. Defined is a proposal phase. So from the measure phase, you have done two-step activity and here itself you are checking with project goals and this is my project goals defined to the organization and when the organization sees that your project goals are in calibration with my organization goals I'll give you go ahead because whatever you are doing it is benefiting my organization goals. but even in the measured phase if my improvement whatever I do, or if my study, or if my research, or if my fix subs achieves project goals, I will immediately put the control system so it should not roll back, or it should not further deviate. I am allowed to close the project then and there. Irrespective of we are, we are doing a DMAC and we have not gone through the further phases, like analyze, improve, control, if you have not gone through all the phases, it is not necessarily said to be that you have to go all the phases. At any phase, if you see that the steps involved, the activities, what we do in that phase, that is sufficient or that is enabling my project goals and deliverables, 
I will conclude by controlling control system setups the project and I will close the project. Do not unnecessarily keep doing the project, even if we have met the objective of the project. Is it clear to everyone? Yes, sir. Thank you very yes, much. It's clear. I have one more question regarding this. So this is a one tool, uh, not in Six Sigma DMAC. Can we apply other tool like FMEA or uh, Pareto charts to identify the uh, problem before? Uh, sir, sir, DMAC is a methodology. DMAC is an approach. But uh, given the chance, when you see here, a uh, measure process baseline or audit current process or correct deficiency. So what research and study you do? You do it with process tools like Pareto, FMEA, QFD. Yes, so they are the tools through which you do this. How you measure yes. your process baseline, how you audit the process, how you check the deficiency, how you research about the deficiency. So they are the tools which is adopted by this approach. Okay. So FAP, Pareto, the approach, huh? ah, they are quality tools, but uh, but this is an approach. This is not a tool. Okay. Thank you. It, it is a method. DMAC is a method. But in the method, we use the tools for conducting these steps. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for your question. Now, I was about to uh, speak about it. So uh, your question came in that what actually we do from this presentation perspectives. So the first we have done the defining the project, defining the project goals and the deliverables from the project. The organization approvers match it with the organization goals and objective. Then we are permitted to define the current process and to measure the current process, the measure phase says to, to conduct, analyze measurement system. So what is the purpose of analyzing measurement system? Can anyone uh, uh, tell me with his idea why we analyze the measurement system? If we have to measure, why don't we, we identify a measurement system and we measure the, the set required? Why we analyze the measurement system instead of identifying the measurement system? What is the difference here? Sorry, Mr. Absinthe, we didn't get you what exactly you... Okay. The step of M here, it is said analyze measurement system. Why it is not saying identify measure system? What is the need of analyzing measurement system? Can you think about it? Just a, just a rough idea. Why are we supposed to analyze measurement system? Because we define already data... There is a data is there. The data we are analyzing in the measurement. Okay, I, I give you a different idea. The process to measure a body temperature, it can be from a digital thermometer or an analog thermometer. Mm -hmm. And in the defined current process, we define how to measure the body temperament. Tempera, temp, uh, temperature, and pardon me for this, sorry. Uh, I hope this is clear. Defining current process is defining how to measure the body temperature, right? It is defined. Now, analyzing the measurement system means we are analyzing the thermometer because measurement device is already identified in the process. But do we really need to test the thermometer that does it give the correct result or not? Do we require yeah. to do? It's important part of it. Otherwise, it will be part answer will be released. If the, if the measurement system is not passing the standard or if it is not acknowledged, proved that it is resulting the correct output, it means we are making a mistake by trusting that device. Given the situation, if it is not resulting you the correct body temperature, what would happen? We will run with assumptions. Yep. 
or we will mistake in further study to avoid that to avoid and is and not uh, further get engaged with unrequired study we as a preventive measure first measure the measurement system okay we measure the measurement system in order to take a preventive step that we have developed our confidence level that the device from which we are measuring is correct and appropriate so the word calibration is applicable here or uh calibration is a different thing uh, probably uh, in in us if you measure with mm in india we measure with cm uh, certainly the device is correct the results are also correct probably that the figures will differ to each other but that is different the the measurement of measurement system is about the measurement of measurement device whether it is in cm or mm we have to make sure that the cm distinguished or the cm dis distinguish in the scale is correct mm distinguish in the scale is correct so what is the procedure for this analyzing this measurement uh, we developed that for example uh, to have a test of thermometer we have to have standards we have to have industry research we have to have industry uh, outcomes on which we will calibrate it so calibration is a part of measurement analysis but before calibration we have to first ensure that the appropriateness of the measurement system selected is correct or not example if the liquid is designed to be weighed in liters is it good to weigh in kilograms will it make a difference so is it is it related to rnr like reproducibility repeatability not now not now we will be doing it for for data we will be doing it uh, for a different purpose but here measurement system analysis uh, given the example when you are working on rnr you are working for reproducibility and repeatability based on apparatus and appraiser so when an appraiser is included we will not be likelihood doing rnr but yes rnr is a measurement analysis approach yes so the whole idea is that if you have a weigh machine again coming down to a very basic example if you have a weigh machine you are weighing your body weight and the weigh machine is not calibrated is again one word but the weigh machine is not appropriate whether it is for human or goods i hope the weigh machine for goods are different from the weigh machine for humans yep. isn't it yes clear so we have to first get into the appropriateness check and then the functionality check so functionality check is calibration yep. from the standards and appropriateness check is with the selection of the correct device for that measurement to be done with yep so msa is measurement system analysis so before measuring the process what we have defined in the defined phase like in the defined phase we have defined the current process but if i have to measure the process baseline i have to be very sure how i am measuring what is measured by which instrument if we have not done this exercise probably we will be getting the results which will deviate us with the baseline study and we will be moving in the project with the wrong data so not to make that mistake we conduct msa which is called measurement system analysis means you are analyzing the measurement system first before 
starting the measurement. Now, again, some, some basic quotes. For the MSA, it is very necessary to understand. Point one, who is measuring? We need to know what we are measuring. We need to understand how we are measuring. And we have to very clear who is measuring. So what, how, who is very, very important. What can be the approach? No, what can be the substance? How can be the approach? And with what can be the device or the mechanism with which you are measuring? So please be sure what you are measuring, how we are measuring, who is measuring. You have to be very sure before starting the measurement. So far, fine with all of you? Yep. Okay. Once we are good with the MSA, we will then measure the process baseline. And if we see that the process baseline has some quick fixes required, and that can be done with the SOPs, we will not get into fancy Six Sigma studies. We will fix the baseline, and baseline is all about standards, all about how the process is designed to be. If by this small activity, if everything can be fixed and uh, that can result to the project goals, then why to keep on going my activities? Why to waste time, effort, money, resource? I will end my project. But ending of the project will only be happening when I am finding that my project goals and objectives are achieved and matching with the organization goals and objectives. Now, if the process baseline is not resulting me, sorry, fixing the process baseline is not resulting me beating the project goals, then what I'm supposed to do? I will audit the current process. That if the process is correct, the process is designed as per standard and the process is meeting the standards then what is wrong? Then we will do the audit. Audit of functionality, audits of SOPs, that whether the SOPs are designed correctly or not. Audit of uh, adherence, audit of users, audit of uh, uh, compliance, everything possible. We will run the audit to know what we don't know. Then if everything is fine with the audit, then we will see that do we have some deficiencies probably we may have missed because with the deficiency, nobody can perform. It means you are not wrong. You are just not capable of doing it. So we will fix in the deficiencies, what we have learned from the audit. And if it meets the project goals, we will end the project. If not, then we will work on the capability performance that the process is capable, however, not capable to deliver the project goals. So what we will do, we will enhance the process capability. We will increase the process capability by learning the performance study that if it can perform by this and if it is not meeting the desired, it means we have to work X to double X, triple X, three X, to make it capable to perform the desired output. If it meets the purpose, and if not, then if you are capable, if you are measurable, if you are designed as you're supposed to, and still you are not able to deliver, it means there is some variations. It means you are deviated. Things are not wrong. Things are there. You can deliver, but you are not able to deliver. Then you will do what study? You will do variation study. But to study the variation, you have to first identify the variation. So we identify the variation. Then we understand the variation by knowing it, whether it is a common cause variation or a special cause variation. So there is a rule 
in a long term, we don't avoid the special cause. But in a small, short term, we will avoid the special cause because rain, uh, suddenly it start raining and you got delayed to office because of huge traffic. But it is happening uh, once a month, okay, exception. But every year, every two months, something is happening like this and you're not prepared for it. Maybe rain is uncertain, but what is your uh, homework for it? If rain happens, then how you are on time? So in, in long term, we don't avoid, but in short term, we avoid and we don't make our data look bad. So we will not work with the special cause in short term, uh, in, yes, in short term, but we will work with special cause only in long term. And if by fixing the variation, if I'm meeting the project goals and objectives, I will end the project with setting up the control system. Even if it is not, then you have to optimize it. You have to add more training, add more resource, add more skills, add more certifications, add more competency. So it can be more result oriented. And if all or all said and done, if it meets objectives of the project, set the control system and end the project. If still not, now you have reached the entertainment level. No scope of improvement or you are done with the improvement and you want something new to happen. Then you come up with a new process design, which is called DFSS for existing process or if you don't want to continue with the existing process, then you will go for DMADOP. Now, this has a flow. In what stage, in each phase DMAC, what you are going to do? And if DMAC fails, are you there to work with DFSS or DMADV? That is depending on the situation. We cannot decide right now and organization members approval. So all clear for so far for all of you or any questions here which I can try answering. What stands for DMADAV? DMADAV is define, measure, design and verify. However, when you add O, it means you're optimizing the design even. All right. So there is the, okay, I'll fix it here. Yes, 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 yes. Well, so I mean, here, yes, tell me. No, it's okay. Uh, you want to ask me any question? No. So if we have a standard measurement already, do we have to analyze again? Uh, when uh, you have a situation which you are uh, measuring, from the Six Sigma perspective, even it is analyzed measurement system, we will still run an MSA to be confident and sure about it. As I said in the beginning, Six Sigma never believes in said and informed. Six Sigma only believes in the data. So even if you say it is measured, it is analyzed and this is the outcome, I will like to still retest it if I am using it for the first time. In yeah, every retesting is fine because I don't want to, uh, like they say, it's a proverb, like we don't have to reinvent the wheel. Wheel is already invented. Correct, so correct, correct. If we have a standard measurements already, I don't want to waste my time during the project to uh, analyze the thing again. Sure, to make sure and to be sure of my measurements, surely I will use a standard things which is available in the market. So to just to run the analyze quickly is uh, perfect or I will be wasting my time to do the entire process again. I would like to say here, since for the first time when you are using a, a measurement system analysis applicability for the your measurement system you have adopted, if it is even endorsed in the market, that this is tested and verified. So Six Sigma will not, or Six Sigma team will not just go by the certificate. Six Sigma right, will right. like to calibrate it. Right, right. Because we want our own results. So 
we cannot do the blame game that okay i i i believe that it was it was correct i believe that it was tested I no 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 we will make tested. sure we will make sure and like you said that we have to go through that but not the entire process i'm saying no not the entire process but we right, have to right. check the results right even right if we are taking it from certified approved organization the right, right. system but we right. have to ensure that at your level at a project team level or at the project level you have your own test scores and not the scores given by the agency or any certified company right sir agreed agreed thank you sir you welcome you welcome because i cannot rely on any one the, the level of project i am in the stake of project i am working i cannot blame any agency or organization who is certifying that measurement system but it means i am believing that agency so six sigma do not work on belief factors yes before the approval yes we do work on the belief factor confidence level gut feelings strong hinges and uh, uh, notions anticipations but only we do not have the approval or access authorization yes any more questions i can try answering over here hello yes okay uh i'm just wondering if by any chance you're going to discuss the uh dma dov along the way or it's on another uh kind of uh certification uh i will be very honest i don't mind uh, introducing you to dma dov or dma tv uh from the learning and the learner perspective Uh, however the scope of certification is based on dmac practices and there are se- there are separate certification models in which dfss is to be trained and certified dma dv has to be trained and certified okay that's uh, and there is one more there is one more certification which is called design by quality so they are separate learning models but trust me if you are through with dmac you won't be feeling challenges with dmad because that is more of research to do define d in dmad we stand for define the same approach m stand for measure the same approach a stand for design sorry a stand for analyze the same approach it is just that instead of improving you are creating a design instead of controlling you are setting up verification levels validation levels so dma dma stands same it's only ic is changing to dv or d or dov dma okay. dma is yep. all same it is the substance will be changing dma in dmac will be on existing <laughs> process dma in dma dv will be for ex, uh, uh, a thought a idea which you want to be translated or created in a realistic situation i want a satellite to launch which has never ever launched i hope uh, uh, india launched first time mars mission and they were succeeded for the first time they tried and they got succeeded have it been in past ever no we designed it we created it we constructed it we constituted it so this is dma is a study again likewise any satellite but the dma dv dma will be the thought idea this is the only difference there no other difference in dma dv okay thank you very much yes thank you for that yeah any or more questions or uh, we can head up for a second 15 minutes break any inputs i think we can go for a break sure sure so uh, we have completed this uh, approach here and now uh, we will be coming back uh, after the break to uh, discuss 
further in the defined phase. Or a few, let's uh, join after 15 minutes break. Yeah. Thank, yeah. You. Thank you very much.
Oh, welcome back, all of you. Yes, yes. Right. Mm. Now, we'll be starting with cost of poor quality, which is COPQ. Am I audible to all and uh, uh, screen is visible to everyone? Yes. Okay. Uh, yes, I am okay. Okay, thank you very much. So, uh, uh, anyone has a prior understanding about cost of poor quality? Any opinions? So, so my understanding. Yes, please. See, as yes, for my opinion, if anything not meeting your specific senior standard, that is a poor cost of quality. Uh, I believe uh, when you mentioned that anything is not meeting. It means uh, it is uh, not quality. Uh, the technical yes. uh, meaning is that if it is anything is not meeting your uh, requirement at expectations or said to be your uh, uh, your uh, means a specific requirement. If it is not being addressed by a set of activity, it is not a quality uh, process or a, or it it does not have a quality. But what is the cost? of that poor quality. Give an example. Uh, somebody used uh, the explanation about Amazon, uh, the product which uh, you receive. Uh, uh, who was the gentleman, please? Yeah, hi, Shubham the same. Uh, hey, Shubham. So uh, Shubham, uh, do you feel uh, in Amazon, I, I can understand well, uh, you request a product, you return a product, you request for the refund, you uh, expect the return to be done, then replacement if required to be done. All this exercise, is it making Amazon profitable? No. no if it is not happening in the first time. So it is not a cost of a poor quality to, the, or to Amazon, which is not counted by anyone. We can feel, okay, they have a service. We don't mind, okay, they have a service, uh, collect it back, refund me, return it. But that service has a cost. But that service is not a part of business services. Their business is not to take returns. Their business is not to keep re re refunding you or keep uh, replacements, orders. Their business is to sell a product. So, while doing all those other exercise, which was not a part of a business service, they those service cost is a cost of poor quality. And as per the study of uh, Six Sigma, Michael Harry, uh, he was like the father of Six Sigma also. They feel that my organization is, is not even spending 1% of sales if I am uh, achieving 3.4 DPMO. But if my organization is working at a 233 defect per minute opportunity at a sigma level is five, I'm spending five to 50% of my sales revenue in order to cover up my cost of poor quality. Likewise, it is not that you're making defects. It's not that you have a defective process. It's not that you have a lot of things not, uh, which is me meeting customer expectations but you are also losing revenue. You're losing a lot of revenue due to cost of poor quality. So that is a big area of concern. So while we work to achieve quality, we also have to focus to reduce the cost behind poor quality. 
Uh, clear to everyone? Yes. Okay, thank you much. Now, this is some more about methodologies, which uh, people have been thinking about that, uh, what are the other methodologies and how the methodology selections happens. In Six Sigma projects, we majorly target on uh, either defect reductions or involving with lean. We work on defect reduction and cycle time reductions together. As well as where these functions are widely used. Defect reductions are widely engaged in lot many places where we have customer satisfactions, manufacturability issues, ongoing transaction or cross-function processes, software developments, and transaction functions. All these setups, all these areas, we focus on defect reduction. However, cycle time reduction is widely used on transaction functions, cross-functions, process mapping, and the moment you do it, as I, I said, when you de develop a process map, it helps you visualize more about your process, more about everything happening in the process. So the moment it is visible to all, we start identifying where the time is more invested than required. So the moment you find where the time is more than required, it means there is a chance of reducing the cycle time. So cycle time shall be targeted at any place where you see transaction functions happening or any cross-function requirements are taking place. Apart from these two areas, all areas majorly emphasize on defect reduce approaches how we can reduce the defect. But cycle time and defect reduction, both taking places at the same time leads to a very good Six Sigma results. Anyone holds questions for this particular slide? No. Okay, thank you. I'm proceeding further. Now, here are certain uh, roadmaps, which if you see, you will be able to understand that in each phase, based on the steps, what are the deliverables and what are the tools which we deploy? <coughs> uh, just don't uh, worry about the tools with the name. Uh, while studying the phase of each program, the tools will be discussed in detail. Talking about the phase defined, it covers step zero. Why it is step zero? Because it's not an execution so far. We are being gathering information. So gathering information is the very initial stage activity. So we establish a CTQ characteristics. To establish a CTQ characteristics, what are the deliverables we have? It helps us Six Sigma alignment to with business and customer needs. It helps us to understand the customer needs clearly. It helps us to prioritize customer needs. So the moment we understand CTQ characteristics, and we will be discussing CTQ again, uh, but CTQ, as I said, it is critical to quality. And what is critical to quality in short I am briefing here, the stage where we extract the customer understanding or customer pain area information. That is called VOC. But it is like a very sentimental statement that, okay, when you visit a doctor, you say that I'm, I'm feeling unhealthy, I'm not feeling well, I am feeling feverish. It's a pain area, but improvement cannot be done with a pain area. I have to make a CTQ, means critical to quality. 
I will check your body temperature. I will check viral status. I will check if any symptoms which are which are resulting to fever. So this is all about CTQ understanding and establishing CTQ characteristics to understand more about the causes of the problem and not to deep dive and only worry about that we have problem because there is no solution to a problem but yes there are a lot of solutions to the causes which generates the problem if you see that you are not well being unwell you cannot improve your wellness you have to change your lifestyle to bring wellness so lifestyle bring cause so your wellness reduce or wellness decreases and you become unwell so we have to work on the causes not the problem in the step 1 we do define a project in the defined phase in that we make project selection we do project scoping while scoping the project it is said in the previous discussion that we create limits of the project that what all we are trying to improve in this project in the measure phase we enter to establish performance parameters we validate measurement system for why and i, I told it earlier that why is my problem which i am trying to improve so we denote the problem with the abbreviation why in order to validate measurement system we use precision in the measurement system it means we are measuring the measurement system accuracy and precision we establish the process baseline which is being done by calculation of the sigma and multiples we define the performance goals by establishing the dpmo mean and variance study we identify variation sources so we understand the prioritization of the excess which need to be improved now however you have five excess but which x to improve when it is only decided based on the potential if my x1 is holding the potential of 40% of my problem and others are 20% 15% 10% 5% then certainly i will like to work on x1 instead of x2 x3 x4 x5 so this is how we prioritize the x based on the potential to the problem the potential cause for the problem in the improved phase we have potential cause understanding that what are the potential cause and how we can how we can establish the relationship and the x functions which can result to the improvement in y so these are the steps moving forward we create certain operational limits to understand about the flexibility we can give to y to improve my sorry we can give to x to improve my y we validate the measurement system again in the initial stage in the measure phase we validate because we are measuring the defective data or defects in the improved phase again we validate the measurement system because we are measuring the improved data so the settings for the improved data cannot be how the settings we have done for the measurement system for the defect data they both are of a different nature so the measurement system cannot be same in the control phase we verify the improvements done and then at the end we institutionalize the new capability as a normal process which is no more new so we also have a list of tools which is listed down so these are the tools which is mostly admitted by many projects that these tools were competent to deliver the deliverables listed for from every step 
in each phase so doing it for the first time if you don't uh, have that learning that which tool to be applied in which phase and for what activity so such road maps help the initial team to be not doing a lot of brainstorming but try and attempt these tools yeah vishnu you want to say something anybody wants to say something here a uh, can please come again i am again afraid i am unable to make out uh, if anybody can uh, let's hear him properly can just help me understand his uh, question two of b and the ttc tool what it stands for you can type in the chat box so mm-hmm. i think i think uh, uh, he's looking for expansion for qfd and ctq i think yeah that's what i understood yeah uh, can you can you tell me the sequence step 5 uh, which step and whether it is deliverable or tool what we, what is what you're talking here okay let me check the chat box okay qfd ctq define phase tool name okay qfd and ctq both are the tools which help you to correct, understand the customer requirements qfd is quality functional deployment and ctq is critical to quality which is like a tree map we characterize every ctq that given the function uh we will have in the slides we will I'll, I'll, I'll let you understand it more clearly that given the problem why what are the causes which are contributing and every cause has its own function so in the ctq drill down tree we have a cause every cause has their own, own function when you list it down it looks like a tree tree diagram likewise for dmac this is how the phase deliverable sheet looks like phase every phase has number of steps every step has required deliverables to achieve every deliverable is supported with a tool so this is how it works for the beginners it is d- designed so you try and you obtain results from this now uh, now we will uh, step in to understand ctq ctq is a product or service character yes sorry can i ask a question uh, from the previous slide i guess there is a little background noise i am unable to make out uh, please oh, uh, i just want to ask from based on your previous slide uh, is all the steps necessary to to go through yeah see uh this is a road map which will help you at the point of any initiation you uh, plan for any area of improvement you want to do so this is like a guide this is like a plan how you should ideally do it will uh, it will like a checklist that have you done this have you done this or not or for this which what you are going to uh, achieve what you going to get as an outcome and for those outcome which tool is more helpful okay but for the tools we can is there any chance that for example one of this tool uh, we might be using a different approach or this would be your preferred for us to use it uh, this is a preference it is not okay. 
uh, oh. it is not, it is not mandate it is they are the preference because okay. see, every everyone has their own situation everyone might have their own uh, uh, types of data which might not suit to this particular tool or which might not result to such deliverables but steps are same steps cannot be changed okay thank you very much you welcome now a ctq is a product or service characteristics that satisfies customer requirement or process requirement stepping in forward i'll just show you something now you can see here what can constitute the business ctqs so uh, before entering that i'll just make a quick question to all of you uh, from the training perspective we have joined here together for a training what do you feel from this training critical to your requirement critical to your expectation maybe you have two expectations four expectation can all expectation be critical no often that okay and if not all expectation can be critical then how do you prioritize that this one is critical I think based on the requirement. So we see yeah. the severity of the problem and the potential loss. On the basis of that, we will uh, define the criticality, uh, critical to quality. Very, very right. CTQ is from the excess, from the factors, from the causes which we have uh, been able to drive out from my data studies, from my uh, diagnosis research. but not all the excess can be ctq there are certain excess which hold very critical impact to the quality and which is said to be something which not results to customer expectation is quality sorry which is uh, uh, sorry i'm my mistake quality is something which results to as per customer expectation or what meets customer expectations but what are the things which can impact my quality something which can impact my quality something which can not support me which cannot allow me which may not support me to deliver to what customer wants that factor is the ctq anything which is critical to your health what is Uh, a sensitive virus corona virus is it not critical to your health status if your health status is normal is it not critical for your health status let's forget about what it it can result to but looking the health status in my mind is this virus is not critical to your health very much yes so anything which is critical to quality or can be said as anything which is critical to the to the service i am providing to the customer and that critical impact can fail me to deliver the customer expectations that should be my area of attention so why something when we list as a ctq it means it holds a impact it is a sensitive x which has a potential to fail me to meet customer expectation or fail me to deliver quality to customer so this is what we have to identify ctq can be business ctq ctq can be customer ctq ctq can be internal ctq ctq can be a project ctq so we need to understand something which is a project ctq probably cannot be your business ctq something which is a customer ctq can necessarily be your project ctq 
but we have to figure it out now stepping in how many of you convinces that these four things are really a business ctq and do you feel that it ideally covers everything which is important for business profitability cost reduction sales growth employee satisfaction does it cover everything from the business perspective i hope so I think when yes. you most yes. mostly everything it is covering at least yes yes so this is how we will list down ctqs because they really mean we are not just making a list of 15 20 50 30 xs because they they are excess i am not saying that excess if listed they don't have potential but we have to study whether which excess have most potentials so these are the four major things this is how we have to constitute my business ctqs which can be my project ctq profitability will be my one of the project cost reduction can be my another project sales growth can be my another project employee satisfaction can be my another project now look looking more into this i just show you just just a moment uh is the slide visible to all yes 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 yeah this says that any internal ctq or any more than one internal ctq can be a customer ctq and customer ctq is certainly a business ctq so if i don't allow any internal ctq to impact my customer ctq then in that case there will never be a business ctq in place in order to fix the business ctq not necessarily a customer ctq can be treated directly it is mostly that your internal ctqs results to customer ctq and that becomes my business ctq if you draw draw a business ctq tree you will feel like in a process map in a process you create a process map of the ctq functions then you will see that there are a lot of internal failures which are resulting to become my customer ctq and customer ctq is certainly a business ctq because business is not different to customer so this can be one of a good exercise for uh, most of us here to drop a process map to identify a factor which can result to a customer ctq and we can also relate the customer ctq with the business ctq which we just saw here profitability cost reduction sales growth employee satisfaction so don't you see that if profitability become my customer ctq then the profitability is becoming a concern because of certain internal factors so in in order to fix the business ctq in order to achieve customer ctq we have to focus on all the internal ctqs as well as external ctqs in most of the projects because lot of process map which you design process when you draw a process map it is said that it is not limited to internal it covers internal and external both at the same time probably you have a courier system but you cannot have your own courier delivery in pan india or in in across globe do you not have to have vendors sub vendors so when you draw a process map vendors and sub vendors will fall in your external factors so when you draw a process map internal and external both factor will be listed but treated as a internal ctq now a quick question 
define your customer. As seen here, there are different types of customer, external, which is like direct or indirect and internal. In external, those who receive the output of your services and pay for the same. Indirect, those who do not pay for the output for your service, but have wasted interest in what you do, like dealers, retailers, government agencies, and others. Internal customers, those within your organization who receive the output of your work. So anyone of you can, can you confirm that are there any other types of customer or this is the only type of customers we have? Because internal, external, direct, indirect. This is what I can widely see. Do you have any other scope for identifying a customer? Or is it covering everything? I think it is covering everything. Yes, thank you. The classification by and large, I guess, sir. Yes, yes. Classification can be further drawn in the picture. However, when we draw the types of customer, it will further lead us to classify them. And we can further seg develop segments also, customer segments also. Now, talking about VOC, which is voice of customer, all customers look for Q. C, D, like quality, cost, and delivery. This is the major interest of every customer. What you are delivering, at what cost you're delivering, and what you're delivering is of what quality. And at the same time, integrity and trust. If I don't trust or if you don't have an integrity, probably I will change my vendor. If I I'll change my base. So integrity and trust is very important, but what we practically look forward, we practically look forward for Q, C, and T only. So what the VOC involves? VOC involves in collecting information from the customers on how satisfied are with the Q, C, D, I provided. And when you conduct an information gathering activity, the voice of customer in a very uh, statement based, like a, a, like a paragraph based uh, pain area when you receive, you will later figure down that the statement what I have seen from the customer and now I'm converting that customer pain area discussion thread into a statement of BOC. I will see that it is expected with quality. It is expected with cost. It is expected with deliverables. It is expected with integrity and trust. Given the chance in future, if you have a chance to uh, receive, collect voice of customers, you will see that these are the specific parameters any statement will likelihood to cover with. And there are tools with which we cover, uh, we gather the informations later which we make as a voice of customer. The tools are survey tools, focus group building, customer complaint box, customer feedbacks, collection. These are the ways where we can collect the information which we later translate to voice of customer. And the stage where we quantify the VOC is called CTQ. Now, understanding about who decides the project and who is the owner of which step. This is uh, very important to know. If you have to select a project and 
green belt a champion who is said to be a person from the process and the black belt only they can approve this step if you have to scope the project it's only the green belt or a black belt can do if you have to define the quality benefits it is only the green belt or a black belt along with finance can do if you have to take the sign off with champion the role of black belt and green belt only permits to take the sign off means project permission if you have to kick off the project like you are making a level 1 process map or a high level process map only a champion a black belt or a green belt can do in order to complete the teaming module like raci which we will be studying in this further slides team charter can be only constructed by black belts or green belts so we have to know this to understand that given the project screening what we have been talking so far that this is what we do in the project in this phase this what this is what to be done then who do it is very important to know that if a black belt has to do then green belt cannot do anything if a green belt has to do then there is no need of yellow belt to decide so champion have their own roles champion and black belt can compensate each other likelihood green belt and black belt can compensate each other black belt can compensate green belt but green belt cannot compensate black belt because of the high end understanding with black belts earns with time so this is how a project is constructed i will make it more simple to understand here in the next slide type of projects so you can see that there is a product from product we constitute sub products a b c for every process like process 1 2 3 4 we have a ctq based projects for every sub product or like only targeting a single cell project or a project in a whole which is entirely product based project not sub products so sub products is ctq based a single cell project is a very specific cd to treated or a project base is treated with the everything within the process understanding it in, in, into a definition wise process based projects are focusing on single process that cuts across products services example call answering process in a multi client call center so whenever you have a entire process to be treated we will work directly with the complete or a process as a whole but when you have a specific ctq to be treated we will focus on a single product or a service within the process and the ctq that involves several internal processes example on time delivery for all orders so every order has to be treated on time now what is delaying me to deliver on time that becomes my ctq so we will focus this as a ctq based not as a complete process to be treated because delivery or on time delivery is one of the function of a process but what is which is resulting not to be on time this is what we have to understand now for single cell based focusing on a single ctq on a single process example defect reduction in invoices for x factory sales to a customer a we have to have project distinguishing but that distinguish can be happening with our understanding that either we are making it a process based project 
CTQ based project or a single cell based project. So anyone have a question out here? Yeah, Mr. Apsig, I have a question that who, is, who will be champion in the project? Champions are the process owners. However, champion can be anyone who best know the process. Like in Six Sigma, we have the highest level, which is called Master Black Belt. So we can say that Yellow Belt also knows Six Sigma, Green Belt also knows Six Sigma, Black Belt also knows Six Sigma, even Master Black Belt also knows Six Sigma. But Master Black Belt knows Six Sigma, not just what it is. He knows the best what or anything which can be done with Six Sigma. Similarly, every process have their own people. Every process have lot many team members. But not everyone can be treated as the most competent person who knows the ins and outs of the process. The person who knows the ins and outs of the process and is the expert of the process, he can be appointed as a champion. So like head of the department or head of the like the organization? Like... Uh, probably I will not say head of the organization because head of the organization is not dealing with the process every day. However, yes, head of the department, yes. Usually, we are having team leaders and we name one of them as a champion. Yes. An expert yes. user in any kind of a field. Correct, 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 correct. That is what the intent is all about. We invite, see, uh, most of the organization do not have full-time black belt or master black belt. If you are appointing the consultant black belt or individual contributor black belt or master black belt, how he can be very sure because he is not from your day-to-day -day operational process. But yes, he is expert in fixing it. Who is going to sync or sim simulation? Who will do the simulation? It is the champion. Because MBB or BB knows Six Sigma well. He knows how to improve it. But someone is needed to tell him about the process. So that is the role of a champion. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Now we have some theme selection metrics. So this is kind of an Excel sheet uh, which we create and we define several project themes and project themes are nothing than the pain areas uh, we have uh, creating it with the customer CTQs, whether it is internal or uh, uh, directly from the customer. And then developing it further, the whether it has a direct alignment with the business process, whether it meets my customer satisfaction, whether it is addressing my financial benefits, how much effort is needed. Given the example, the benefits are higher with the lower effort. I will immediately decide how to do it. But if the benefits are higher, even the efforts are very high, I will say, okay, wait for a time. If the benefit is higher, efforts are moderate, I will say, do it now. So these are certain areas which we have to fill in so the team can decide which project to kick off with. You can see in the next slide, uh, you have an on-time delivery situation, which is a customer or business CTQ. But the internal CTQs are reliable transit lead time or on-time dispatch. These are my internal CTQs for my on-time delivery function. But for the on-time dispatch, I see loading of the product or the testing of the product before loading. This is my pain area and this becomes my project theme. So testing, we will fill here. Theme, testing will be my project theme and the customer CTQ and the internal CTQ list down. And then considering all the these three columns, we will then fix these columns. And whatever you will study from this, this will support you to decide to go with a yes to do or no to do. 
This is how the selection summary summarizes. We have CTQs like cost reduction, satisfaction, customer satisfaction. For the customer satisfaction, we looked into the customer CTQ that no rejection has to happen or on-time delivery has to happen. If the on-time delivery is more important, just a second, please. A uh, six, a uh, sorry, a uh, four. Uh, we have uh, around 10 minutes more to complete with. Uh, so here uh, we have uh, we have been seeing that customer CTQ we listed down with the no rejections or on-time deliveries uh, based on the user data we fixed in the internal CTQs whether it is testing or on-time dispatch based on on-time dispatch we use again data to understand the project theme based on whether it is a transport arrangement to be treated or the loading has to be treated so this we started with a different buy, which is called customer satisfaction. But we, we might end with a different buy, which is called loading or transport arrangement, which, which is called selected. This is the project we are going to do. So it is not possible, not most often happen that we start with a buy and we end with the same buy. We start with a buy as a problem, but the project CTQ might differ to my customer CTQ. My project CTQ will become transport arrangement or loading. The key concept is it is possible that some project teams are straight away available from business CTQs, increasing inventory turns, customer CTQs, no product damage in transit, or internal CTQs, cycle time of testing. However, teams would need to do scoping of these themes. For example, team may select the inventory turns of product A for improvement. So this is all about your brainstorming. This is all about your uh, key decision makers. It's all about a uh, very logical research to be done to decide which improvement to take place and which project to start with. So this is where we uh, complete. And uh, I hope uh, let's, uh, before uh, getting into the further slides, uh, I'll have a quick exercise like identify a project theme. Probably you have a brainstorming on potential project themes as per internal CTQs. Arrive at a short list of three, four project themes using multi voting, or use the theme selection metrics on this short list to select six Sigma projects in your team. Given the chance, if uh, in the next uh, session we create some focus group out of all the training members present here. And if we decide upon building up a project theme, uh, can you people identify some scope or area of improvement from your respective uh, workplace? Anyone? Okay, we'll try. We'll try once because uh, it will. It is very helpful that while uh, learning, if uh, you have a time and if you try to uh, build it, uh, you can immediately come back with the questions that I tried. However, it uh, I, I need some more assistance. So during the the tenure of the training, I will be very happy to do it. However, uh, even post training, you can you can put all your requirements and assistant needs, I'll be happy to do that. So my next topic to start is project charter. However, I will prefer not to kick off with this because it will take me not less than half an hour to complete. So we still have 10 minutes in hand. So 
all of the team members. It will be re requested if somebody can share across anything which I can answer. Or, uh, okay, rework and reprocess, good. We can, we can fix, we can try making a business case for it. However, a process map would be needed. Now, uh, I was asking any team members in this training group have any questions because we'll prefer to have a quick question answers instead of starting with a project charter. Yeah, it's not question, but just my comment. <laughs> yeah, please. Comment. <laughs> far, far, uh, the digital Okay. Uh, I, I couldn't make it very clear, but I would like to uh, request all of you, those who have a little time constraint, uh, can, uh, yes, uh, it's completed for the day. Uh, it is completed for the day and uh, probably uh, let's let's join next week to begin with i'll not i'll not retain anyone uh, who who have uh, have something to take up right now All, all training members, I will request we can conclude for the day and uh, we'll resume back next week. <laughs> Yes. I can see that uh, some people uh, have very urgent something to take up now. So uh, we'll wind up for today and uh, we'll uh, start next week. Okay, sir. Thank you okay, very uh, much, all of you. Thank you. Thank you very much, all of you, for your today's time and patience and availability for the training. And uh, we'll join all of you next week. Thank you very much. Thank you also, yeah. Mr. Thank you, sir. Thank, thank you. Thank you, everyone. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Jake. Thank, thank you, you sir. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Have a nice weekend. All of you.